heart of Wisconsin. Valley Sports Wisconsin, the heart of the fan. It's a new day. It's another beautiful day in the big leagues. And Brewers baseball is presented by Pottawatomie Hotel and Casino. Play to win. The Phillies and the Brewers match up for the final time in this three game series. Final time of the regular season, and the Brewers trying to avoid a sweep, and they've got their ace on the mound. Great pitching matchup today. Zach Eflin coming off a gem his last time out against the Angels. Corbin Burns coming off his worst start of the year. He's looking for that bounce back. The reigning Cy Young Award winner. Hi, everybody. We welcome you from American Family Field. I'm Brian Anderson along with Bill Schroeder. We'll hear from Sophia Minard in just a moment. It is a great day mm -hmm. for a ball game. The Brewers are trying to erase a five game losing streak, but these Phillies rock. They have an excellent pitching staff, especially in their starting rotation. Yeah, no doubt about it. I mean, this whole homestand, I mean, the starting pitching against the Brewers has been top notch. Zach Leflin. No different. I mean, his last time out against the Angels, eight innings, five hits, no runs, only one walk. I mean, that's the thing for Zach Eflin. He doesn't walk batters, only 10 walks and nine starts, two or fewer walks, and 33 straight games for him. So the Brewers need to be very aggressive early in the count. He's not going to walk you. So you hope that the Brewers are going to be able to get something going off of Eflin. Corbin Burns, a bounce back he needs. He got. Hit pretty hard against the San Diego Padres. Only three and two thirds innings and one of his shortest starts in a few years. The cutter just wasn't there for him. The Padres all over him. Eight hits, five runs. Very unusual that Corbin Burns had a rough start. But the good news is after a Brewers loss in four games, he is uh, the team is 4-0 and in those starts. So Corbin Burns kind of the stopper, if you will, in that starting rotation. Our advanced stats brought to you by Pottawatomie Hotel and Casino. Sophia has more. She had a chance to visit with a couple of players. Moving the needle, trying to turn the page and break this five game losing streak. We'll get the vibe from the clubhouse when we continue. Thank you. Milwaukee Brewers baseball on Valley Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. And by your local Chevy dealer. Telez's numbers at home this season, a 318 average, seven homers, 21 RBIs. The OPS for him over 1,000. And he's having a good homestand as well. His average nearly 350. He's had eight hits on the week against the Padres and the Phillies. Rowdy Telez and the Brewers, they got to ring the bell, though. It's been a while for the crew. Good afternoon, everyone. Sophia Minert here at American Family Field. And Rowdy Telez and that Brewers lineup, they are looking for a spark. It's been a tough stretch for them offensively in this five-game losing streak. They've been shut out three times and have scored just eight runs in that stretch. So they're looking to bounce back here today. And Jace Peterson and Rowdy Telez, they have been through these stretches before as a team they are going to have to rely on their depth they have continued to weather the storm through a number of injuries though they are getting healthier they've added Hunter Renfro and Willie Adamas back to their lineup still without their gold glove second baseman Colton Wong so here's what Jace Peterson and Rowdy Telez had to say about snapping that losing streak and getting back that spark offensively that they've had here at home obviously you're going to have to have a win I feel like is huge um, so we can kind of get a win and get that momentum back and sometimes it just goes through one inning you get score a couple runs an inning and then guys start feeding off that but it's it's a long season and I feel like every year you could probably look back and, and there's two week a week stretches where you just don't win games and it's not going your way really and then before you know it you, you win 10 in a row you know I think we have a hundred and some odd games left I don't think anybody's really worrying but you know we need to play better in all aspects every single individual on this team can do better um, we can all put in more effort we can all do a lot of things to help the team win you know we're not hitting um, the best that we can you know the guys need to step up and I think that's plain and simple it's not one person it's not one inning it's not one anything individually it's just we need to play better the Brewers one win on the homestand was Thursday night the comeback the walk off from Andrew McCutcheon the Brewers need a moment who's going to deliver that one here this afternoon the series finale between the Brewers and the Phillies we got first pitch and lineups coming up next.
award winner throws the rubber today. Final game of the series and of the homestand. We're glad you're with us. Brian Anderson with Bill Schroeder, Sophia Minnett, our Emmy Award winning reporter. Today's game produced by Dan Keener, directed by John Walsh, our excellent Valley Sports Wisconsin crew. Rob Thompson, 5 0 oh, as the interim manager for the Phillies. He took over for Joe Girardi. The Phillies have won six consecutive games, their longest winning streak of the year right now. Two games under 500 at 27 and 29. They are still nine and a half back of the New York Mets in the NL East. Potawatomi batting order for the Phillies. Kyle Schwarber leads off. Reese Hoskins in the two spot and the designated hitter Bryce Harper who homered last night. Nick Castellanos, JT Real Muto and Didi Gregorius in the middle. Alec Bohm, Bryson Stott and Mickey Moniak. Round out the starting lineup. Stott and Schwarber each had four hit games last night. Rock the Phillies can hit. Corbin Burns has his hands full today. Yeah, he's coming off uh, a rough outing against the Padres. He suffered a seven to nothing loss at the hands of San Diego. Three and two thirds, a really short start for Burns. Eight hits, five runs. That was his first loss since May 7th at Atlanta. So he's been pitching well. Look for a bounce back here today. Let's check out the defense behind Bernsey here this afternoon. Yelich, Taylor, Renfro in the outfield. You got Jace Peterson at third. Willie Adamas, Luis Arias up the middle. Rowdy Telez at first and Victor Caratini behind home plate. Four man umpire and crew in place. That is Nate Tomlinson calling the balls and strikes today. Got the shades on. Dan Bellino at first. The crew chief is Laz Diaz and Trip Gibson over at third base. He had the plate last night. All the pieces in place. We're ready to play ball at American Family Field on a picture perfect Thursday afternoon in Brewtown. 75 beautiful degrees here, abundant sunshine. And Burns' first offering is upstairs, ball one, and away we go. Kyle Schwarber with a four hit game last night. Schwarber. Is fifth in the National League in homers. The batting average is low, but he draws a ton of walks. Matter of fact, he is second in the NL in walks coming into play today with 35 and therefore an OPS of 800. He hits for power. He's having another terrific month of June like he did last year. And always loves hitting here in Milwaukee. All those years with the Cubs as Burns misses. Two balls and a strike to count. And yeah, leadoff hitter that has the ability to get on base, whether it's a hit or a walk. Most of the time, walks hitting 209, but a 333 on base percentage. That's pretty good for Kyle Schwarber. Burns delivers and he misses. Three balls and a strike to count. Philly started with Schwarber, Hoskins, and Bryce Harper. It is designed to be one of the best. Offenses in the National League. They have not been hitting to their liking, but this team has turned it around. They've gotten hot here. A swing and a miss. Nasty from Burns. Serious cutter at the bottom of the zone. That had a little more break than normal, and it comes in there at 95 miles an hour. Yikes. Yeah, you figure Corbin's going to be off business today. He does not like having a start like he did his last time out. The cutter was a little bit inconsistent. Padres able to center on a number of them. That was a good one. Full count here. And Schwarber swings and misses. He goes right back to it. And the game starts with a strikeout for Corbin Burns. A perfectionist is Corbin Burns, and it really burns him up when he has a start like he did his last time. And that was a Pitch out of the strike zone looked pretty good at the knees until it got to the hitting zone and how about that movement. We have the pleasure of watching this in person every time he takes the mound here in Milwaukee but. Do not forget this is something special Corbin Burns brings to the party that's 98 miles an hour that's a sinking fastball. As he gets ahead of Reese Hoskins and more the four seamer the two seamer maybe 98. Hoskins hit a two run homer last night. Phillies popped four homers in the game last night, but uh, 
a four run inning that included two two run home runs that really did in Adrian Hauser and the Brewers and the Brewers are not hitting right now. So it was a no contest last night one you put away quickly and don't think about and there's a swing and a miss Burns goes right back to the cut fastball and Hoskins down in the count of ball and two strikes. See what Burns has in mind. One and two. A swing and a miss. Good block by Caratini. And back to back K's to start the day. That time on a curveball. Nice work back there by Caratini to secure the out. Yeah, getting a lot of playing time with Omar Narvaez on the COVID list. Alex Jackson, the other catcher. He hasn't had many starts, but Victor able to keep that cutter close. On the curveball, the curveball since the beginning of last year has been virtually unhittable. Although Manny Machado hit one out of the ballpark last time out for Corbin, you don't see that very often. It's firm too, 84 mile an hour curveball with significant break on it. Two K's to start it. Here is Bryce Harper. What a matchup today! We get to see with Burns and Harper. Harper up there, aggressive first pitch swing. Get the sense that that cutter has really got a late break to it. I mean, Schwarber swung and missed on one that wasn't even close. And Bryce Harper way over the top of that last one. You can see Harper's trying to dial it up quick. Harper hit a bomb of a home run in his last at bat. Shows bunt this time with the shift on. Brewers won't be phased defensively by that. He will not adjust the defensive alignment, although Harper. Will bunt for a hit every now and then just to try to keep the defense honest, but it's always a shift. I think the Brewers would be just fine to have him bunt. One ball, one strike to count. Two outs in the first. We're just underway. Got a few day games today on the Major League Baseball schedule. This is one of five afternoon games. Two are underway Arizona and Cincinnati. And the Cardinals are in St. Petersburg taking on the Rays today. Rays already out in front two to nothing over the Cardinals. We'll be keeping an eye on that one. Dodgers White Sox Rockies Giants also in the afternoon. A swing and a miss. That was the change up from Burns. So he has unveiled his entire arsenal in this first inning rock yes. and it is all nasty. Five different pitches. He's on a mission today. Two and two to Harper. Shows bunt with two strikes. And it goes to three and two. I mean, if there's ever an indication of how good a guy's stuff is, Bryce Harper just showed bunt with two outs and two strikes. <laughs> Yikes. I'm not sure I've ever seen that. Yeah, especially with a guy like Bryce Harper, right? A guy that can hit the ball out of the ballpark at any time. Having an MVP caliber season offensively. Here's a 3 2 and a swing and a miss. He struck him out. Three consecutive K's to start the day. Nine strikes, seven of them were swings and misses. He got Schwarber, Hoskins, and Harper. And Burns is off to a great start. He's in the lineup batting third for Craig Council who is still one win away from tying the franchise record for managerial wins. Potawatomi batting order for Council today with Yelich back in the leadoff spot. Adamas his second game back and then Rowdy in the middle. It's Urias McCutcheon and Peterson. Hunter Renfro, Victor Caratini, Tyrone Taylor rounding out the starting nine. Zach Eflin on the mound for Philadelphia coming off a terrific start. Against the Angels his last time out. He's another excellent starting pitcher for the Phillies run. Yeah, no doubt about that. Picked up a win, a 10 to nothing win against the Angels. Eight innings, five hits, no runs, only one walk, but that's not the story. Zach Eflin does not walk batters. Only 10 walks all season so far. So if you're a Brewer hitter, attack early. Don't look for a walk. Yelich back in the leadoff spot again today. Second consecutive game. 
was in the leadoff position last year briefly. He really hadn't been in that role much since the 2018 season, his MVP year. But was in the leadoff role often with the Miami Marlins. So Craig Council without Colton Wong. Tried to mix it up a little bit, get Yelich in the leadoff spot, see if he can get going. That's really the only thing uh, Craig Council could do to jumpstart this offense. And maybe move guys around in the batting order, try different guys in the starting lineup. Anything he can do to maybe shake it up a little bit. Brewers have really struggled offensively on this homestand. Two and two the count on Yelich and a swing and a miss and a strikeout to start the day for Zach Eflin. We see some pretty good curveballs today between Burns and Eflin. Let's check out the defense behind Zach Eflin. He got Schwarber, Moniak, and Castellanos. In the outfield, Alec Bohm, D.D. Gregorius, Bryson Stott has been swinging a hot bat. Reese Hoskins at first. And J.T. Real Muto once again behind home plate. Day game after night game, and Real Muto back behind the dish again. Yeah, one of the best catchers in the game. Here's Willie Adamas. Second day back for Adamas after he missed 20 games with an ankle injury. Was over yesterday. Took the collar in his return. Played an excellent shortstop as he usually does. wasn't a whole lot that went right yesterday for the Brewers. Phillies with the four home runs. They won the game ten to nothing, shutting out the Brewers in last night's affair. Aaron Nola beat Adrian Hauser, and Nola has emerged as the Phillies' ace. Numbers back it up. Matter of fact, Corbin Burns just passed Nola for the National League lead in strikeouts with the three punch outs in the first. But Nola had that spot briefly today. And they go Nola to Eflin. One, two to Adamas misses down and away. Eflin, not the big strikeout guy. He likes to pitch the contact. Talked about those 10 walks and nine starts. You mentioned his curveball though and he got the strikeout on Yelich with the curve. The majority of his strikeouts come on the curveball over 44 percent of his strikeouts and not known as a strikeout pitcher but that is a strikeout pitch for him and there is his mix. We'll be diving into the cutter today. He doesn't throw it near the volume of Burns. Oh Adamas gets into one center field that is way back there and this one is going to fly. Home run Willie Adamas and the Brewers strike first this afternoon an absolute bullet off the batter's eye in center field. Well needless to say the Brewers needed that a quick strike they had to get a lead for Corbin Burns. First hit since returning from the injured list. And the man who ignites this offense, the spiritual leader of this team, comes up with a bang here in the first inning. They got a fastball down at the knees, just dropped the head of the bat on it, and did it just jump off that bat. Mm. That ball was torched. Ring that bell, Willie. Easy, Willie. He has a tendency <laughs> to break those bells. <laughs> I'm sure he's got some adrenaline pumping through him after that clout. Here's Rowdy Telez now. Rock this ball left the bat at 109 miles an hour. Travels 418 feet. Two seamer down. Outer half of the plate goes right back into center field and a line drive. It's Willie's first home run here at American Family Field since May 5th. Glad to have him back. That is such a big piece to get back for Milwaukee. Missed three weeks with that ankle injury. Big run producer. Ooh, Telez drilled by pitch. Eflin trying to work inside and he hits Big Rowdy. It would feel like a mosquito bite to Rowdy Telez. Yeah, just kind of brushed it off. Head down to first base. Trying to work him inside just a little bit too far. 
Right, the forearm. Yeah, right below the elbow. So Rowdy's a left-handed thrower. That'd be his glove hand. We'll see if that swells up on him at all. But he's a big man. He can take a punch for sure. No problem. Does that make him a threat to steal now? I don't think so. Oh, okay. No. Even though he might be a little bit irritated. <laughs> they put. He's got a big lead. Here is Luis Urias on the first pitch in the air of left center field. Moniac got a good jump. Plays deep anyway. Able to run it down. Another curveball. You're going to see a lot of those. We're talking about his curveball. 23 curveballs. Last time out against the Angels. 15 of them for strikes and half of his strikeouts came on that curveball. He's left a couple of them up in his own today. Two gone for Andrew McCutcheon. Back in the DH role today, Yelich starting in left field in McCutcheon splitting time there. Two outs, runner at first, a run is in on the Adamas homer. And a strike from Eflin. Tough to get good contact off Eflin throughout the year. Those numbers really jump out at you. He is second in the majors in uh, exit velocity. Very weak contact. 84 and a half miles an hour on average off the bat. And that is the second lowest mark in Major League Baseball among starting pitchers. And one of the reasons is his mix of pitches. He's got five different pitches and his location. A lot of guys when they get times when a guy throws a lot of strikes he's going to give up homers. He's only give up four. Sometimes you can throw too many strikes but that's not the case with him. He just flipped that cutter in there on. McCutcheon. Much different version of the cutter than Burns of course that applies to everybody. And Eflin. Missed with a fastball. And McCutcheon in a one two count here. 84 and a half exit velocity on average. Only Drew Smiley missing barrels at a better clip than Zach Eflin. Swing and a miss. Tied him up. Nasty pitch. McCutcheon down on strikes. Willie is back. And Adamas puts the Brewers on the board first this afternoon. An absolute rocket to center. He rings the bell and the Brewers lead it one to nothing. Hanging out of the ballpark. It's a beautiful day. In the groove a little bit. One nothing Brewers lead it. Willie Adamas with a home run in the first. We head to the second. Here comes Nick Castellanos to face Corbin Burns. Burns is stalking these Phillies hitters right now. I mean, we're early, but. He hit the mound, was ready to go before the actual 10 after game time started. He's standing right on top of the mound on the rubber, waiting for the hitter to step in. I mean, there's a little body language here yeah, he, in Corbin Burns. He, he's on a mission today after that start against the Padres. A little extra bounce in his step, a little extra on that fastball today. There's always that psychological battle too between pitcher and batter the confrontation and Burns wants to let everybody know that he's in control here. Big swing by Castellanos. One and two the count. One and two the count on Castellanos lead man for the Phillies in the second. And able to lay off. Not many are able to take that pitch. Slider that time. Check this out, Rock. The band, they did a terrific job with the national anthem, but Burns. You got to stop. Extreme focus. I'm going in the dugout. You better stop. <laughs> Move out of the way. Horn or no horn. <laughs> yeah, he's definitely got the game face on. He always does. He's a great competitor. All the great ones do. Yeah, he's got the cutter working so far today. Did not have it going very well. His last start. 
And that's a rarity. He always has that pitch in his back pocket. Full count to Castellanos. And he lost him. Castellanos will draw the walk. So the first blemish here for Burns. Let's check out today's TikTok. You have to see it. And for Corbin Burns, the first inning was a thing of beauty. Three strikeouts. So, Rock, there were seven swings by Phillies hitters in the first inning, and all seven of them were whiffs. There were no foul balls. Yeah, I mean, you know, the cutter was incredible. He's got the strikeout. He had one on the curveball. He's throwing four different pitches already today. And just has a different look about his pitches, the way they're shaped today, as opposed to his last start against San Diego. It's pretty impressive to a big league lineup. No foul balls, no balls in play. Seven swings, seven whiffs. He threw nine strikes in the first inning. Eight of them were the swinging variety, or seven, I should say. Had 11 swings and misses his last time out, already seven in the first inning. Facing JT Real Muto here with a runner at first. There's not much of a difference for Burns when there are runners on in the way he pitches. He has that modified wind up that looks more like how he would pitch from the stretch. There's a little extra kick in there when he's in the wind up, but that's really been uh, one of the big reasons he was able to turn the corner and improve his pitching was how he did modify his wind up. It's a very short compact motion. So not much of a difference for Burns with the runner Ouch. on and Roddy Tliss said take it easy. Wow. Did he throw a cutter over there at a him? bullet down. <laughs> I think he got him right in the palm. He's already been hitting the forearm on that right arm. Roof is open on a glorious day here for the grand old game. Two and all to count on Real Muto, and that one buckled his knees in there for a strike. Yeah, the way he works out of the stretch, pretty much, you know, now all the time. And he made that adjustment after the 19 season, and his thinking was is you know my most important pitches throughout a game are going to be with men on base and I'm going to be working out of the stretch or so why not get used to doing it. Yeah good point. That's smart. Cleaned up those mechanics. Two and one a ah, swing and a miss. One of the more subtle things if you do go back and you look at video of Burns and you know to the naked eye and I think to the average fan and even even me I mean it takes guys like Bill Schroeder explaining this stuff but once you pay attention to it you can see the difference in in the head tilt he really used to throw the head out of the way to clear his body the head would go towards the first base dugout now it's a much cleaner delivery and because of the fact that he's working out of the stretch. You know, that head starts to tilt and the arm drops a little bit and the release point becomes very out of whack at times if you will not very consistent and you know, the more consistent your delivery is you know, the better chance you have of throwing the baseball where you want it. Now just watch Burns head here as he lets the pitch go it's there's very little movement now keeps his sight lines and everything in line which allows him to throw a lot of strikes deals out a big sweeper a curveball and he missed with it I'll tell you that is an impressive take by real Muto curveball just missed yeah, a lot of guys swing and miss at that pitch either either an impressive take or just fooled uh, that may be better suited you hope he doesn't have a read on Burns there's always a concern when a hitter takes a pitch like that that they're seeing it or seeing something chases that one the cutter three and two the count Didi Gregory is due next for the Phillies eight pitch of the at bat coming fifth batteries face and already his fourth full count so the pitch count is a little higher than he'd like in this early going runner at first nobody out and he missed and back to back walks to start this second inning so as good as Burns was in the first with the three K's 
two walks two deep counts and two walks here in the second and walks normally not a problem for Corbin Burns he barely hardly ever walks anybody two walks his last time out one walk before that and the start before that that was against St. Louis back to back walks here in the second inning. Well, a moment early here. Phillies with two on, nobody out. Gregorius will step in, left handed hitting shortstop. Gregorius had a triple earlier in the series. It's been his only hit. He's one for seven. Burns could use a ground ball. And a swing and a miss. Only guy in the starting lineup last night without base hit. Phillies didn't need him last night. Even Harper was 0 for his first four before he homered in his last at bat, hit a three run homer. Big production last night from Schwarber and Bryson Stott. Another swing and a miss. Nasty. 0 and 2 the count. Yeah, bottom of the Phillies order has done big damage first two games of the series. It's amazing what a difference that designated hitter makes, isn't it? You don't have to deal with the pitcher at the bottom of the order. No break at the bottom of the order. Alec Bohm do next. Had a crushing home run in game one to tie the game. Homered off Josh Hader. Brewers with a 2 1 lead at the time. Phillies won that opener in a comeback style. Base hit Gregorius. Red throw up with it. They're going to hold Castellanos wisely. Two strike single by Didi Gregorius, and the Phillies have the bases loaded now with nobody out. They got a cutter at 96. It was down out over the plate. That cutter by design on the outer half for the plate, but Gregorius with a nice at bat, he stayed right on it and hit it hard in the right. You don't run on Hunter Renfro. Sensing a big inning. So here is Bohm now. And we've seen his ability to turn around a high velocity fastball. Bases loaded, nobody out. Burns deals and a swing and a miss. This is the spot where Burns needs a strikeout. And he'll have to go into the well here. High stress pitches in the second inning for Corbin Burns. Not a better starter for the Brewers to get the strikeout. Keep that cutter down and away. Don't make a mistake. Oh, well, good numbers with the bases loaded in his brief career in the big leagues. A 300 hitter. Tall, wiry, strong Philly third baseman. 6'5. Well, he's got some pop in his bat. Just four home runs, but this is a guy that the Phillies believe is going to be a 20 25 homer a year guy. No balls in a strike. Count even. No shift for the Brewers. Playing Bohm straight up with the bases loaded. Best arm of the outfield is in right. Castellanos not a good runner at third. Swinging a foul into the screen. It's one and two now. Not a bad pitch by Corbin down and away, but still Bohm able to get a bat on it. I mean, these guys are looking away, no doubt about that. And do you dare come inside on on these guys? You make a mistake in there, it could cost you. But they are certainly looking away, especially the right-handers. First at bat for Bohm against Corbin Burns ever. And the one two and a swing and a little foul ball more Caratini bounced quickly but it was called foul at the plate. That was close Caratini taking a chance that it was in fair territory. 
got to play it just in case. You never know. Mm. Looks like that one was behind the point of the plate. That makes it a foul ball. Good call at home. But close. Yeah, very close. Do it again. Another one two pitch. Did he go? Did not. Checks his swing. Says Dan Bellino. That'll even the count at two and two. Pretty good slider. Bohm able to hold up, I guess. Could have gone either way. See what Burns has in mind here. 2 2 pitch, a swing and a miss. There you go. That's the strikeout he's looking for. That opens him up a little bit. Fourth strikeout for Corbin Burns. All of the outs have been via the cage. Yep, Cutter started out on the outside corner, then with the late movement, ends up off the plate. And he got his strikeout. That pitch has a lot of movement today. And so one away. 24 pitches into the inning here in the second. Burns picks up his first out of the inning. Now we'll face Bryson Stott. Popped a two run homer last night. Hit a walk off home run Sunday against the Angels. And he takes a ball. And Rock, you mentioned the bottom of the order. Philly's bottom of the order is in our getting more done brought to you by the Home Depot. Hitting 391. In this series, seven for nine, four homers and five runs batted in across the first two games. A strike in there, right down the heart. It really does make a big difference when the starting pitcher doesn't have to bat. I mean, you get that bona fide hitter in the lineup, everybody's bottom of the order much better these days. Stott has hit three homers in the big leagues, the rookie, and they've all come in the last week. Burns misses. Close. One of those grinder innings. It's going to be a 30 pitch inning, most likely. Still only one out, and Burns pushing that 30 pitch number. His stuff is good, but back to back walks to start the inning, and then a two strike single. And in some trouble in this second inning. Two balls and a strike on Stott. Two two. The old equalizer to curveball. Every out's been a strikeout. Burns would love to add one more to that. They're loaded up. Two and two to Bryson Stott. Here he comes and a swing and a foul. Just got a piece. Everything's got really good movement on it today. Just a matter of whether he's able to find the plate with it. Curveball, just got a piece of it. Brewers get an Adamas homer in the first inning. And Burns trying to put up a zero as Stott fouls this one away. Well, whether the Phillies score or not in this inning, this is going to be one of those innings that takes a lot out of Corbin Burns. And he's having to go to his A stuff. It's going to shorten his start. No, no doubt. Question. Yeah. Brewers are loaded for Bear in the bullpen today. Headed to D.C. after the game series with the Nationals starting tomorrow. On the ground, got a chance to turn it. Out at second, throw to first, not in time. Stott beat it out, Phillies tie it. A collision out at second base, Urias colliding with Gregorius. Untangling themselves over at second base. Credit Stott with an RBI on the fielder's choice, and the Phillies get a run. 
It's tough getting the handle for William Dobbins. He didn't get it the first time, and by that time, a little bit too late. Look at that slide. It's more like a barrel roll slide. I didn't think you could do that anymore. Adamas got a change up grip. The feed was not good. And it in the old days it really would have put Urias in a bad spot. That's yeah, no a kidding. That's a clean slide. It just borderline though. Urias put, had to deal with Gregorius coming in. Put the arm up like that. So the Phillies answer. Now Mickey Moniak with runners at the corners. And if Burns can get out of this with just one run, that'll be a small victory here. A former 1 1 Mickey Moniak. First pick, first round. Has not had the start to a career the Phillies had hoped for. He was really swinging the bat well. That's off the glove of Telez. Real Muto stays put at third base. Yeah, being a top pick doesn't necessarily guarantee success, but it does guarantee a lot of chances. Yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> Drafted him number one overall out of high school. Carlsbad, California. Moniak was having a great spring. And then he broke his hand. He was hit by a pitch. And broke his hand. Phillies hitting coach Kevin Long, who's a renowned hitting coach, has been in that role with a, a number of teams. He encouraged Moniak to get on top of the plate. And you notice how close he stands to home plate. And it made a big difference this spring. He felt good. He was driving the ball. But it also put him in harm's way, and he got hit by a pitch and fractured the hand. Yeah. Three and oh, the count with runners at the corners. A marathon inning here for Burns. A strike. And Corbin had a difficult time throwing that. Back door cutter on the outside corner to lefties. He's coming close, but he's not getting the call. That's a big pitch for him ordinarily. Got to go after Moniak here. Kyle Schwarber looming on deck. Moniak knows that. Swinging a foul. Three and two now. Burns back in the count. Every hitter that the Phillies have sent up there has had two strikes on them so far today. Every one. This will be the 36th pitch of the inning. Three two and he lost him. Oh, that's a no no there. Burns is asking for it now. He walks the ninth place hitter, Mickey Moniak. His third walk of the inning. And now the bases are loaded for Kyle Schwarber. Craig Council goes to the bullpen phone, and here comes Chris Hook, the pitching coach, on his way out. You just don't see three walks in an inning out of Corbin Burns all that often. This is a rarity. All the damage on the bases and only one base hit. That was Gregorius. A base hit the right. Has sucked the life out of this ballpark here. Good crowd on a Thursday afternoon. Adamas gets them on their feet with a home run in the first. And Burns having a hard time getting through this second inning. Just completely dominated the first inning, did Corbin Burns, but much different since. Sanchez getting loose. Well, moment of truth has arrived early for Corbin Burns. You don't normally get those in the second inning, but here is Kyle Schwarber with the bases loaded, who had a monster month of June last year as a member of the Nationals, and he's having a big month of June already this year.
Schwarber with four hits yesterday. A strikeout victim last inning to start the game. Takes the first pitch. That one's in there for a strike. That was a backdoor curveball from Corbin Burns. And just try something else. Having a difficult time locating Cutter. Drops the curveball in for a strike. You might remember Schwarber hit 16 homers in the month of June last season was the player of the month in the National League then injured his hamstring was traded to Boston for whatever reason June has been his month a strike in there change up that is the pitch he got Bryce Harper with. And now in a one two count. Phillies have a run in. One two pitch swing and a miss. He struck him out Corbin Burns back to the curveball. A 41 pitch marathon second inning. Phillies have the bases loaded nobody out. They only manage one. But a taxing inning for Burns. We are even at one here. The Brewers trying to snap that five game losing streak. Our quick trip to the clubhouse, checking in with Jace Peterson, who's leading off this inning back at third base here today. And Peterson has been swinging a hot bat over his last 11 games. His average is over 300. He's got eight hits in that stretch as well. And so, Peterson, for him, it's all about the approach and the commitment to that at the plate. He said, just going up there and trying to compete, he said, and swinging at the right pitches. And he said, He'll let the game dictate whether he feels like he needs to be more aggressive or take pitches in the at bat. He said different spots of the game of course in the game situation will dictate that as well. But he feels like he's putting himself in a good position to to do both to be aggressive and to both be selective. So he said with two strikes it's just about trusting those decisions and trusting the plan and the splits for him back that up. He's got a 583 average when he's ahead in the count and two of his five home runs on the season have come with two strikes. So again over those last 11 games two homers and eight RBIs he's been a bright spot in that Brewers lineup as they're trying to snap out of this losing streak. And he has been about as consistent a defender as you can ask for anywhere you put him second base third base throw him in the outfield he's going to give you a good effort defensively and he always gives you a good at bat he might not always get a base hit but he will make a pitcher work really resurrecting his career as a brewer he's turned into a terrific player here after bouncing around quite a bit former first rounder by the Padres his major league career really never got going like the Padres had hoped drops a bunt down foul and that'll leave an account at two apiece. But one thing about Peterson, everywhere he's been, managers, coaches, his teammates just rave about the kind of presence he brings and the kind of teammate that he is. And that's no different here in Milwaukee. Yeah, willing to fill any role. You know, play him wherever you want him. Put him in any spot in the batting order. And he's been a nice addition. He's played mostly third this year, but has played some first base, second base, and both corner outfield positions as well. 2 2 to Peterson. Count will stay at 2 and 2. He hasn't caught yet. That's the one position he has not played. He's pitched. He's trying to avoid that as best he can. <laughs> Why would anyone? Who want to be a catcher no kidding that's the fastest ticket into the broadcast booth Peterson flies to left field and Schwarber in the bright sunshine will make the play for out number one or the manager's seat a lot yeah. of catchers are managers that's a tools of brilliance Rob. <laughs> hey stay up to date with the crew of the MLB app get in game video highlights live pitch by pitch breaking news player updates stats leaderboards and more get the MLB app today free for your smartphone or tablet. So what was the genesis of you becoming a catcher something you wanted to do or just because you're the biggest kid on the block uh, my father when I signed up for seven year old baseball back in New Jersey <laughs> and you're the size of a 12 year old yeah 
<laughs> they didn't believe my uh, birth certificate. <laughs> you were shaving then. It's a matter of fact. You know, we signed up. We signed it up at the uh, at a fire station yeah. in, in New Jersey in Hamilton Township, and in the uh, in the cardboard box. You know, with the old uh, old beer cans. You, you bought a case of beer, and you had the cardboard box on the bottom. There was catching gear in there, and I signed up. My father signed me up, and I said, you know, I don't want to have to wear that. Do I have to wear that? <laughs> He said, yes, you will be wearing that because even if you don't hit, you're always going to have a spot on a team. <laughs> he was already hedging your bets for you. He already, he already, <laughs> I think he had that uh, catching gear sitting back there on purpose. Oh, that's great. I'll never forget it. Take the a Mercer, little pressure off you. The Mercerville Fire Station. That's that was your where team? we signed up. Oh, no, that's okay. where we signed up. They called it Tiny League back in New Jersey. Seven, eight, nine-year-old. No T ball, all live pitching, no coach pitch. Just a games, little, little piece of Americana right there, I'm imagining, like a Rockwell painting. Yeah, right. Those games lasted forever, a lot of walks. <laughs> I bet they did. And you're the catcher. <laughs> yeah. Renfro takes a ball. Good times. Well, it's a, it is a position for those who have done it. You don't want to give it up. There, there's a, an element of control. As the catcher, you're the only player facing the rest of your teammates. Only player in foul territory. And you can really stay involved in the game. That's a tapper. That's going to be a tough play. Eflin bare hands and throws Renfro out. Man, was that something else. What a play by Zach Eflin. Wow. Yeah, talk about athleticism, right? I mean, bouncing off the mound, bare hand, all in one motion. Able to grab it, spin around, and make a good throw to get Renfro at first base. Put a circle around that play. Beauty. Boy, Reese Hoskins' reaction says it all. Wow. That was impressive. I didn't think they had a chance to get Renfro. A lot of pitchers are going to be able to get to that baseball, maybe put it in the bare hand, but then they have to set themselves and Get themselves in position to throw, but not him. All in one motion through a strike. That was a beauty. That'll be one of the best plays of the day in Major League Baseball, guaranteed. Here's Victor Caratini now with two away. I love catching. I was a catcher coming up. I'm gonna say I, I just I, yeah. I love the position. I love the being involved. On both sides of the ball, and I played other positions as well. I played right field and some third base and second base, and um, I'm built like a second baseman. But I actually uh, preferred to catch, yeah, just because I thought to be engaged in that way, the game planning, the all the nuance, trying to read the hitters, trying to navigate with your pitcher, you know, partnering up with your pitcher as a battery mate. Uh, I, I love that part of it. Yeah. I thought that was. The best part of the game as a me. catcher you have to know pitching you have to know defense where guys are positioned you got to know. You know hitting because you have to get at bats you think about the Brewers broadcasters I mean how many are catchers <laughs> four of them right yeah there's a shot to right Caratini and that is off the base of the wall on a bounce Caratini chugging his way to second base and the Brewer catcher with a two out double here in the second inning. So you've got me, you got you, you were a catcher. Yep. Jeff Levering was a catcher. You I think Dillard started out as a catcher, he didn't sure he? Did. Yeah. Sure did. There you go. He didn't have the stomach for it though, Tim Dillard. Yeah, a good piece of hitting by Caratini to line that one over the head of Castellanos. I think the move to uh, you know pitcher for him panned out pretty well. Got himself some big league time. Tyrone Taylor now with the runner at second base two outs. One one game. And Taylor in the left field a base hit. Caratini's going to be held at third. Schwarber got to it quickly. And a two out single for Taylor back to back hits for the Brewers. And now they've got him at the corners back to back hits on back to back pitches. Yeah, really nice the two seam fastball right down the middle and Tyrone Taylor who's been scuffing a little bit on the homestand able to hit a bullet in the right in the left hit it too hard 
Yeah, to score Caratini from second base. Taylor's first hit in the series. Back to the top of the order and Christian Yelich. Yelich had a single and a stolen base last night. Playing the role of run producer here. First and third, two gone. Eflin deals. Yelich takes a strike. A backdoor breaking ball, curveball from Eflin. Overall numbers for Yelich offensively are down. But these are the kind of situations he's had some success with runners in scoring position. He's hitting 282. Four of his five homers have come with a runner in scoring position and an OPS over a thousand. Been at his best in moments like this. And with two outs and runners in scoring position, hitting 333, so been even better. They're ready to see some action here. No balls and a strike to count. Count evens at one and one. Two quick outs to start the inning. Eflin made a great play on Hunter Renfro, but has given up back to back hits since. Rocky, think that play by Eflin, the throw, would take anything out of him for the subsequent hitters? I mean, it was a pretty quick play. I mean, he didn't have to move all that much. Pretty tall guy, so maybe a few strides able to get there, but I doubt it. He made a couple of mistakes. The Brewers take advantage of it. Two and one to Yelich. Got a hitter's count. Three balls and a strike. That was a good take. Yelich will draw his walks despite the low batting average. The walks have kept the on base percentage somewhat respectable. Phillies just scored one in the top of the second. Brewers trying to answer. And that one misses, and Yelich draws the walk. So they are loaded now for Willie Adamas. So after that play by Eflin, two hits and a walk, and here comes Adamas. He hit a bullet in the first StatCast. Showing us some pretty big numbers here, Rock. 109 off the bat and home run number 10 of the year for Adama. StatCast powered by Google Cloud. Low fastball right down the middle of the plate and he put a charge into it. He just missed one in yesterday's ball game. Popped it up a little bit, but able to center on that. Let's see if Willie can come through again. How about a base hit? It's a long meeting at the mound. Caleb Cotham, the Philly pitching coach. And the meeting finally broken up by Nate Tomlinson. So they're loaded up. Phillies had them loaded with nobody out in the top of the inning. Scored just one run. And now the Brewers load them up with two outs. Three consecutive base runners with two outs. If nothing else, giving Corbin Burns a good long half inning to rest his arm and get a breather. Adamas takes a ball. He's always ready to pounce on that first pitch. Eflin trying to get him to bite on that four seam fastball. A pretty similar location to the, where he hit the ball out of the ballpark but a little bit lower. Ready for a 1 0. And Adamas a swing and a miss. Anxious hitter. 
Let it fly on the 1 0 pitch. Fifth plate appearance for Adamas with the bases loaded this year. He's 0 for 2 with two walks. He and Rowdy Telez, club leaders with 10 homers. One and one, Adamas pops it up behind the plate into the seats. One ball, two strikes. A pretty good pitch to hit right there, right down the middle. Little uppercut got under it. Remember that game last year, Rock? The Brewers spotted the Cubs a 7 0 lead and came back to win 15 7. Yeah. That day, Willie Adamas hit his only grand slam as a Brewer. Fouls this one away. That was Aaron Ashby's major league debut, right? It was. It was almost a year ago to the date. It was June 30th of 2021. One of the signature games of the year last year. 15 unanswered runs in that game last season. And Adamas had the big hit with a grand slam. He's got him loaded with two outs. One ball, two strikes. Hang it in there. He is on the do not pass go mentality right now at the plate. And pretty close. And down and in. Well, Willie's in swing mode. Eflin is a pitcher who hovers around the plate. See if he can get a mistake here. One and two the count. Here he comes. That one misses. Tried to get him to bite on the high fastball. I would imagine ahead in the count as he is, that was by design for Eflin out of the strike zone. Just to see if he'd bite on one. Not a guy that likes to work up in his own too much, but he will do that with two strikes. Seventh pitch of the at bat to Adamas. 2 2. Missed with it. Willie wouldn't chase. Good take. And now it's three balls and two strikes. And now all three runners will get a head start with Rowdy Telez on deck. A lot of traffic on the base pads early in this game. 1 1 game. Bottom of the second. 3 2. Runners go. Adamas rips one foul into the screen. A 30 pitch inning for Eflin here in the second after Burns just threw 41 in the top of the second. Phillies using the pitch comm system. No signals. 3 2 on its way. And Adamas hang it tough. Pretty good pitch right there, right on the inside corner. And he's going to see at least 10 pitches in this at bat. Nick Nelson getting loose in the Phillies pin. Tell you what, for a 1 1 game, there's been a lot going on here today. Again, all three runners will get a head start. They've been getting in their wind sprints. Pitch number 10 of the at bat, the 3 2. Little half swing roller. Eflin gloves it. And Adamas is out. He tried to hold up. It was going to be a ball. Instead, it gets him out of the inning. Tied at one. Brewers strand them loaded. And today's bounty quick stats Corbin Burns this season with his NL ranks. Miss rate, best. In the National League, the cutter usage is number one in the National League. Strikeouts, he just took over that top spot with three Ks in the first inning. All the numbers, any way you cut it, are strong. And even coming off a, a poor start his last time out, Corbin Burns still with a 2.50 ERA, top five in the National League. Burns had to muscle through a long second inning run, 41 pitches. He walked three batters, gave up a single, but only one run scored. Yeah, how about that? Between the two starters, what was that, 80 pitch any? Pretty close. 
Hoskins who struck out in the first inning leads off this third inning. You said there'd be no math today Ron. I was just estimating. It's I mean close to 80. 72 72 73, something like that. You know the major league record for pitches in an inning is I believe 62. Wow. 62. That's a lot. It's a lot of pitches in it. Yeah. That's when you need the pitch clock. <laughs> Corbin Burns, after that long inning, probably did himself well by you know, the Brewers getting a long inning, a lot of bad bats. Unfortunately, nothing on the scoreboard. Some recovery time. Yeah. There aren't many pitchers, let's be honest, that are going to. Get enough leash to throw 41 pitches in an inning. Burns might be the only one, as a matter of fact. But they will be watching him closely the rest of this start. And pretty close. Nate Tomlinson, a little tight on that strike zone at times today. Three and two the count on Reese Hoskins. Another three ball count and another long at bat and another two strike count on these Philly hitters. Burns has faced 11 batters. He's had six three ball counts. After striking out the side in the first inning. Three and two to Hoskins lead man in the third. My unofficial check is Russ Ortiz through 62 pitches in an inning. Is that the guy? Russ Ortiz. Our guy Daniel Norris, who the lefty reliever, pitched for the Brewers. He had a 54 pitch in it a few years ago. I believe Bartolo Colon had a marathon inning once. And Burns misses badly. Hoskins draws the walk. Yeah, Burns. Looked like himself in the first inning was nasty, but it has been anything but. He's only giving up the one hit, though. I mean, four walks. That is unusual for him. Council's barking at Nate Tomlinson, not about that last pitch, but the the pitch prior to the two foul balls that he thought was a strike three. Pitch number five. New career high in walks for. Corbin Burns four. That's how good he is. Got a man at first. Here is Bryce Harper. It's advantage pitcher right now. Typically, this time of day in Milwaukee, when the shadows start to creep out between home plate and the mound. Harper didn't like that call, did he? Where's his emotions on his sleeve? Well, maybe Craig Council got the home plate umpire's attention. Another bad throw to first. Telez actually able to keep his body in front of it, which kept it in the field to play. Arias over there backing up. Rough day for Rowdy. He's getting beat up today by his own pitcher. That was a Schinberger right there, I think. So he's got a couple of shots on the right arm and one on the shin. Don't rub it though. No balls in a strike. Hmm. Caratini did all he could to keep it in front, but that's going to be a wild pitch. And you got to figure Craig Cowden's got to be thinking about getting somebody loose. I'm sure what's going on with Corbin. Change up down in the dirt. Got a piece of it, but not able to keep it close enough. Phillies with a runner in scoring position and nobody out. And the dangerous Harper at the plate. One ball, one strike to count on Harper. Again, shows bunt. That's a foul ball. Almost self defense. That was coming right in on him. 
You hardly ever see Bryce Harper do that. I mean, he tried to bunt a couple of times his first time up. Rizzi showed bunt. That one coming in on him actually was behind his back leg. Got to get that bad head out in front. He showed bunt with two strikes his last time up. Ultimately struck out. Burns has him in a one two count. Two and two now to Harper. Had him out in front, but able to foul it off. Harper's having a big year. He, he cannot play in the outfield right now. He's got a injured elbow. And the hope is to get him back after the All-Star break sometime. But offensively, with the DH in the National League, he's been a factor. Top five in batting average, homers and RBIs. Had it not been for the designated hitter, he wouldn't be playing. Currently second in OPS. Down he goes. Burns hits the outside corner with that cut fastball, and Harper is rung up. Strikeout number six for Burns. He has had a difficult time landing that pitch on the corner, that backdoor cutter, but able to do it that time. He's been uh, working, trying to work that pitch in all day so far. Got a big strike out of Bryce Harper. Perfect pitch. He's recorded seven outs, six of them via the strikeout. But it has been a wild ride. Here's Castellanos and a swing and a miss. Castellanos walked and scored last inning. The Phillies lone run. Brewer scored in the first on an Adamas homer. But they just stranded the bases loaded. He went. Swinging strike. And it's quickly no balls and two strikes on Castellanos. Yep, clearly going. No balls and two strikes. On the ground, gobbled up. Peterson got a terrific arm, and he makes a play for out number two. Hoskins will advance to third on the play. But two men are gone in this third inning for the Phillies. Got a chance to hear a quick word from our friends in Feltco. It's a grand slam of savings with free installation from Feldco. Feldco, improving lives one home at a time. Call 866 for Feldco. Two gone. Here's JT Real Muto. Real Muto, one of the three walks last inning for Burns. Six Ks, four walks here today. Burns misses in the first offer to Real Muto. It's a strange day for Burns. Hard to get your arms around it. He's got 17 whiffs, 17 swings and misses. So just for context, 17 is his season high, and he's already accomplished that here in the third inning. He's got the four walks, three of those coming last inning. He's only given up the one hit. Go figure. Sometimes there's no explanation for the game of baseball, is there? The game he had those 17 swings and misses was against the Atlanta Braves in May, and he gave up four earned runs in that game. So maybe the swings and misses don't always correlate. That was a swing and a miss. Good block back there by Caratini. Saved a run, got down in the dirt to keep it in front, and now it's one and two. Got to be a little difficult to be see right to see right now. Everything in the shade except for the pitcher.
One ball, two strikes. Phillies have a runner at third, a leadoff walk. Burns going after his seventh K. And that one's in the air. Lazy little pop up. Urias waving everybody off. And Burns strands one more. The Phillies have left four on the last two innings. Still tied at one. We head to the bottom of the third. Brewers coming to bat. Zach Eflin both grinding away here. And we're pleased to be joined by Tom Flanagan. It's always a good chance to catch up on what's going on in the Brewers minor league system. And this is the guy who's in charge of it. Vice President of Minor League Operations. Hey, Tom, how you doing? Not too bad, VA. Good to see you. I like to remind people every now and then, haven't done this in a while, but you know, Tom used to be a bat boy. You've literally been with the organization since you were what, like 15 years old? 17 years old. 17 old. years 17, old. Yeah. And now you're 27. <laughs> 10 years. 28. <laughs> 10 years in the league. Uh, yeah. He's uh, come up all through the ranks uh, and now running the Brewers minor league system. So give us a state of the union on what's uh, happening in the minor league system from your seat. Things continue to go well, obviously, um, kind of in that dog days summer approaching here. But uh, all our all four of our full season clubs are in full swing. They're they're nearing that that halfway point at the A ball levels. And then since the last time I was on, we've our four rookie league teams are two Arizona clubs and Dominican summer league teams have started up this week this past this past Monday. So uh, eight full full teams actually have 10 games today because we have a couple double headers in the system <laughs> in Nashville and Carolina. So. Uh, full capacity. Rowdy Telez skies one to right, and there is the first out of this bottom of the third. Yeah, Brewers have uh, had to go to the minor leagues quite a bit. Talk about you know how that affects every level of the minor leagues. So you bring a guy up from Triple A, does it automatically mean that a guy from Double A goes up to Triple A, or do you play shorthanded? How does that? How do you work that out? It's usually mixed, you know, situation to situation. A lot of times we'll have enough depth on hand that guys can kind of kind of gut it out. I mean, maybe a little do a little bit extra each time, but oftentimes there will be that domino effect where you like to avoid the moves that are unnecessary. So we try and you know marry the opportunity with a guy that's earned it from the level below if the if the need arises but we're mindful of not disrupting their routine and their rhythm and and obviously each club within the system kind of has their own thing going so we want to make sure it's a delicate balance we've got a number of people that contribute to that process and uh, take a lot of things into consideration before we make those moves Yeah, last time we talked triple a was doing pretty well now Rick Sweet has he uh, actually called you up and said uncle uh, quit stealing <laughs> my guys I, I need to get something going here dad in the minor leagues how are they doing No, our guys are our guys are great that way we, we disrupt their their flow a lot but that's they know that's part of it and and the players obviously enjoy the the opportunity coming up um, and yeah everybody realizes it's just part of the game so part of this, something that we work through continually. 2-0 to Luis Urias here as he bats with one out in the third. We're visiting with Tom Flanagan, VP of Minor League Operations for the Brewers. One guy that's on the radar here is just up the road in Wisconsin and Appleton. That's Tristan Peters. Was the Midwest League Player of the Month in May. Uh, one of your uh, high draft picks. How's he doing? What's his story? He's doing great. He's he's. Uh, kind of been an under the radar guy. We have a very deep system in terms of outfielders, and and Tristan doesn't get a lot of the, the, the recognition so far. But he, he's really put himself on the map. Has really had a great year and kind of capped it off with an excellent May, like you said, up in Appleton. There's a number of good outfield prospects there that have gone through there, and and he's held his own with any of them. He was a, a seventh rounder last year and, and already in Appleton. Uh, OPS over a thousand last month and. Um, a number of guys. We had a, a tremendous list of candidates for the, the individual player of the month honor, so it was great to see Tristan get recognized by the whole league. Take us to these other names here, Flynn. Yeah, Arbert Sipion, a high school pick out of New Jersey in 2018. It's kind of a late bloomer, but really went off in May at Carolina, has since bumped up to Appleton, uh, homered in his second game up there. So, a uh, toolsy, toolsy guy, great kid, uh, extremely hard worker, off the charts, um, quality person. And then Cam Robinson, the uh, he's kind of the closer in Appleton. He's actually leading all of minor league baseball in saves this year. Not something that we shoot for, but he's pitched multiple innings, you know, many times up there, and he kind of locks down the uh, the back end of ball games for the T Rats. So you're not necessarily developing closers, but there are pitchers who emerge in the closers' role in every minor league city. But you're not develop, developing them to necessarily 
beat closers in the major leagues. Is that about right? Correct. Yeah. It's uh, oftentimes it's more important they get the back-to-back -back outings regardless of situation. They go multiple innings, kind of do some of the things in that environment. But when you can get them at the back end of games, you know, usually higher leverage situations, it's great for their development. They can, you know, get used to that extra pressure pitching at the back end if it works out where they can get the workload that we're we're trying to keep them on in place. How has the uh, the new rule that you know the pitch clock I mean how has that you know, affected you know the pitching I mean what what levels of the minor leagues for the Brewers are affected. Yeah, it's it's really the pitch timers are all four full season clubs have it. We don't use it at rookie ball just due to not having the clocks in physical place in all the ballparks but it's been tremendous. I, I think early on you know guys were a little bit worried about getting rushed or, or pitchers especially you know could they maintain velocity throwing is often but so far based on the the numbers it's really done a good job basically to remove a lot of that dead time from pitch to pitch so I think the time of game has been reduced by about 25 minutes across yeah. the board and yeah. full season ball so it's 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 been great I think the players have gotten a handle on it where I think uh, penalties or, or assessed balls and strikes when they violate the rules it's really down to only a couple times per game so I feel it's, like it's affected the hitters more than the pitchers the hitters are being rushed into the box a little more than the pitchers being rushed to pitch yeah, at this, least what I've seen yeah the hitters have to be alert to the pitcher and, and it's tough sometimes where it's a kind of a leverage pitch where it's a three two pitch and you get a assess the penalty so you kind of get the bat taken out of the guy's hands but um, it's got to be the rule and the, the umps have done a good job trying to apply it consistently consistently from park to park and night to night are there guys in the minor leagues you know pitchers that are you know relatively slow workers that have had to adjust and how has that affected them yeah there was there was some we started to kind of get a, a, a clock out during spring training put it by the fence and, and time guys just because there were some some pitchers that we knew just their setup you know the way they the way they got ready it just we knew it was going to be a challenge for them so it's something we tried to give them a heads up on and I think they were they were great you know accepting the challenge of kind of speeding it up and getting to the point where it doesn't affect them throwing strikes or, or command of pitches but just able to comply with the rule drop an air horn on them if they take a little <laughs> bit too yeah. Yeah. yeah we get Charlie Green up in the tower with the with the air horn yeah. whip him into shape Andrew McCutcheon here in a three two count Tom Flanagan joins us heads up the Brewers minor league system. Brewers with a runner at first to Rias. 1 1 game here in the bottom of the third inning. Eflin with the long pause. And McCutcheon spoils that one foul. Average minor league game time, Rock, is now 2 hours and 35 minutes. Mm -hmm. And what is exactly the pitch clock? It's different when there are runners on base than when the bases are empty, right? Correct. It's, it's 14 seconds with nobody on base and then 18. With runners on, I think Triple A goes to 19. It's one second difference. And when does it start? When's the clock start? It's supposed to start when both the hitter is on the dirt area and the pitcher is basically on the dirt with the ball. Mm -hmm. You'll you'll see a little variance in that, but yeah. again, I think guys in in the scoreboard or upstairs are trying to do the best they can to to keep it moving. The umpires do a nice job of of uh, picking it up as well. Do you yep. see that in the big leagues here pretty soon? Maybe next year or, or no? I think potentially I think you can condition the guys a little bit when they're coming up that I think it might just speed guys up and, and you see your players in the big leagues already that yeah you know suitor clock wouldn't be an issue guys like that that <laughs> extremely quick work I wouldn't be them. again starting it right now like <laughs> at this moment started this before, particular right? game <laughs> well Brewers had something going here back to back walks by Eflin hasn't been quite the same pitcher since he made that terrific play right in the second inning he has issued two hits and three walks since that time he did pitch out of a bases loaded jam last inning now it's Jace Peterson with two on and one out and that one's in there for a strike of all the changes that I know and I didn't mean to turn this into a what can we expect in the major leagues but you've seen it and you're experiencing this there are a number of changes that are being implemented in minor league baseball uh, larger bases moving second base up a little bit the pitch clock uh, the automatic balls and strikes so uh, sure. in your opinion what are the things that are resonating uh, right now that you're seeing have success yeah I think the pitch timer rightfully so gets a lot of the credit because they're looking to increase the action that's necessarily change the game or eliminate anything other than that downtime pitch to pitch so I think that's been the most dramatic and probably most positive effect that all the rules have had. 
Uh, the bases really has been uneventful. The, the larger bases really, yeah. I mean, you, you know they're bigger, but it's really mm -hmm. something that. And that the, the idea behind that is to try to increase stolen base attempts? I think a little bit of that, and then also safety just plays yeah. around the bag just a little bit more uh, access for the runner, right. head first slides, mm -hmm. things of that nature. But but that one has been pretty nondescript, easy yeah. to adjust to, no, no necessary preparations really for that one. One, two to Peterson, little rollover ground ball. Stott to second. Ooh, almost a bad throw. Gregorius able to keep a toe on the bag. That's a second out of the inning. Stott made that a little more dangerous than it should have been for the Phillies. I don't think he had a very good grip on the baseball. Arm dropped, almost threw it into left field. Pretty good play by Gregorius and gets the toe down. And to get the out at second base. Tom, how often do you uh, on the road? I mean, traveling around to the minor league affiliates and uh, is it something you do regularly? Yeah, it's, it's pretty regular. Right now, um, in town, obviously, this week. Um, got some personal. Got my son graduating Friday night, so oh, trying to stick around. Congratulations. See that. Thank you. And then uh, probably hit the road again shortly after that, get get to each of the places. Been everywhere once so far, except for Arizona. But now that they're going, we'll try to get down there here as well to see the guys. All right, we need a quick Bat Boy story. What's your best one? Like, uh, you're brushed with greatness when you were a Brewers Bat Boy. I don't know. I just I just marvel now when I watch the guys do it. There's so much more <laughs> they do now. We just we had bats or we had the balls behind the plate, yeah. which was like a kind of a death chair. We were almost directly behind home plate <laughs> with a right. half half helmet and uh, you know white knuckling it for nine innings. Yeah, but you were the one to pr protect the manager yeah. down in there. So in your era of bat boy, who was who was were you the visiting team? I was. Uh, I team? started in the visiting side, yeah. and then moved over to the home side the second year. Who's managing the Brewers at that time? Uh, initially, Tom Treblehorn, and yeah. then by the time I got over there, it was Phil Garner's first oh, okay. year. So, did you come across Rock as a bat boy? Was he playing yeah. for the Brewers? Just missed him. I think oh. missed him with the Angels as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How many years you've been with the Angels? Ninety was the first. So, for you, yeah, yeah, ninety. I was with the Angels. Yeah, that's unfortunate for you, Tom. <laughs> I was a big tipper. <laughs> no balls and a strike to Hunter Renfro. And Renfro sends one high in the air to left field. Schwarber is there to make the play. Always enjoy our visits with you, Tom. Great job with the Brewers minor Thank league you. system. Thank you. And we'll look forward to our next chat. Get you. Uh oh. We had a in conflict between. here. Pound or shake? I say we go pound from now on. You know what? No, I'm going to go handshake. I, I got to get out of the whole COVID thing. <laughs> See, aren't you glad you weren't with him when he was a player? There you go. Baseball <laughs> here at American Family Field. Brewers and Phillies tied at one here in the fourth. And you can join the Milwaukee Brewers for MLB Play Ball Weekend coming up this Saturday. Young baseball fans 5 to 12 years of age are invited to participate in a morning of free baseball and softball instruction. Families can also enjoy free food and beverages, take photos with the mascots and more. If you want to register, you can go to MLB.com slash play ball slash events. Should be a good time, guys. Are there any uh, Sophia Minard appearances there? Are you uh, available? Um, unfortunately, because we'll be we'll be in Washington, D.C., but I think Rock is off, so maybe Rock could be ah. participating in some instruction. On assignment. That is going to fall, and Taylor lays out for it. The ball gets by him. Gregorius. Around second on his way to third, and this is going to be a leadoff triple. Yes. Tyrone Taylor sold out for it and could not make the play and could not keep it in front. The second triple for Gregorius in the series. He tripled his first at bat, first game of the series. A line drive, and Tyrone Taylor laying out, just not able to get there. They say if you don't catch it, you got to block it. Not able to keep it in front of him and Gregorius all the way around to third base. Mm, he was close. Yep. Not a bad effort by Tyrone Taylor. Just came up a little short. Gregorius reaches on a triple. You realize that is the first count not to reach two strikes in this game. It's been a weird statistical kind of game on the pitching side for Corbin Burns. Six strikeouts. Had a 41 pitch second inning, a lot of swings and misses. And everybody but Gregorius has been in a two strike count thus far. That is very odd. And a lot of pitches, you're right. I mean, we're sitting here in the uh, fourth inning, 82 pitches are ready for Corbin. And nobody out. Base runners everywhere for both teams. Brewers just stranded two, they've left six men on base. 
Phillies have stranded four in the last two innings. And another two strike count here as Baum is in a one two count. Look at all the walks. Two guys that very rarely walk anybody. Zach Upton with three walks. First time he's walked more than two guys in 34 starts. And Burns with a career high. Right. And had three in an inning, which had never happened. Boom fouls that one away. By the way, thanks to Tom Flanagan for coming up and uh, talking shop with us. He's always excellent with the briefing on the minor league system, and he's done a great job. I love his bat boy stories, too. You know, his son Michael is uh, a Brewers bat boy. He's not working today. Guessing he's in school. But uh, Michael carrying on the tradition. Burns just missed 98 mile an hour fastball. And it's two balls and two strikes. And yeah, Tom Flanagan, one of the good guys in the game of baseball. That one didn't miss by much, but it looked like it was a little bit low. Pitch number 86 coming. We're in the fourth. Runner at third, nobody out, and it bounces in. Somehow Caratini keeps it in front. Second time he's done that. First time was a changeup. This is a slider. You don't see this from Corbin Burns all that much. Slider way in front of home plate. Well done, Victor Caratini. And a save a run. It's risky to be on one knee. A lot of catchers are doing it these days. It is being taught that way. And Caratini, the athletic catchers, do a good job keeping those pitches in front. 3 2 pitch. Swing at a miss. Burns put it right down the middle with a cutter, and Bohm comes up empty. And another key strikeout with a runner in scoring position. And not sure if it was the movement or the velocity. 96 down the middle of the plate, and Bohm. Probably looking at his bat, wondering how he didn't make contact with that pitch. Still shaking his head. One away now. Gregorius still at third base. Here's Bryson Stott. Brewers have their infield in. Gregorius, a very fast runner at third. And Stott takes a ball. This guy's been a tough out in this series. Spots, but a Stott has been able to keep his spot on the big league roster. Came up for Gregorius when Gregorius was hurt and has been able to keep himself in the lineup. Pops this one up. Adamas will make the play, and now two men are out, and still standing at third base is DD Gregorius. It'll be Mickey Moniak now, ninth place hitter. Burns walked him with two outs in the second inning to set up maybe the the moment of the game for Burns when he faced Schwarber with the bases loaded and a pitch count already in the upper 30s. Ended up striking him out on the 41st pitch of the inning and got out of that second inning with only one run scoring despite the Phillies loading the bases with nobody out. That's why you leave him in. I mean, he can really find it really quickly after the triple. He's been able to find it pretty well. Of course, Victor Caratini's made a couple of nice blocks. The 1 0 swing and a foul. One ball, one strike. Already 10 at bats with a runner in scoring position for the Phillies. Moniak had one of those plate appearances. He drew the walk. Here's the 1 1. And that one misses. Another close one right around the edge. 
is yep. Corbin Burns thus far. He had doubled up on the curveball, just misses the top of the zone. I don't think that's where he wanted it, but could have got the call. Two and one now. Lead off triple. Burns trying to get through it. A swing and a miss. There's that cutter once again. Burns a chance to get out of this fourth inning, sitting on seven strikeouts. Two balls, two strikes on Mickey Moniak. Do it again. Hey, good job trying just getting a piece of that curveball down at the bottom of the strike zone. That was a good pitch. Now Burns has Moniak all over the map in the left side of the box. He is off balance with every swing. And he put him away here. Two and two. Let's see what he goes with. Bouncing ball. Burns shovels it over to first and gets through it. Nicely done. Lead off triple by Gregory as Burns leaves him standing right there at third base. Still 1 1. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Field and for the best coverage in the game, let's check out the T Mobile coverage cam. John Walsh at the controls, our terrific director, on this beautiful Thursday afternoon. This has been some weird game, a grinder thus far. 1 1 game, final game of the series. A lot of base runners. Two starting pitchers that have been bending quite a bit, but not breaking thus far. Only one three up, three down inning between the two of them. That was Corbin Burns' first inning. But it's only one to one, only five hits. Eflin facing Victor Caratini. Last time up, Caratini with a double in right field. He knocked it over the head of Castellanos in right. That was a a two out rally for the Brewers. They were trying to put a crooked number on the board. They had two hits and a walk to load the bases, and then Eflin got out of it. Caratini, little late. Fly ball into left field. And Schwaber, who's been busy today, makes a play for out number one. A marathon of a second inning between these two yeah. pitchers, right? 41 pitches for Burns. Eflin threw 32. And both stranded the bases loaded. Cardinals and Rays have come to a conclusion, Rock. Tampa Bay has beaten the Cardinals again. Two to one the final score. Rays win it. With only five hits combined in that game. A pitcher's duel, McClanahan beat Michaelis. And St. Louis, they have uh, lost a few games recently here as well as the Brewers have. So Milwaukee's been able to maintain their spot atop the National League Central despite losing five in a row. That's a race sweep. Three consecutive losses for the Cardinals. Regardless of what happens here, I know it's early, but the Brewers will be able to maintain ownership of first place. Two balls and a strike on Tyrone Taylor. Fly ball to right. Hit it on the barrel, but got under it. And Castellanos makes a play for out number two. Hey, a reminder, this weekend... High school softball comes to Valley Sports Wisconsin. You can join us for live coverage of the WIAA softball championships. Start Saturday at 8 a.m. on Valley Sports Wisconsin. You can watch it on Valley Sports Wisconsin Extra and it is also streaming on the Valley Sports app. I've been dialed into the. Uh, the uh, College World Series softball. Texas Longhorns Oklahoma Sooners that's been fun. Now that's a game with some pace. Yeah. Enjoy that. You see a Tom Brady's 
niece. She plays for UCLA. She's a great player. She, her name's Mariah Brady. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've been into it. Yelich takes a ball high. We got the uh, baseball state championship uh, happening next week. Heartland is uh, yeah Arrowhead's in it doing well yeah Arrowhead's Arrowhead in. you're right Tim O'Driscoll the legend he came in gave us a bit of a uh, rundown as to what they have to do to win a state championship what do you got to win three games to win a state title right, right. yeah now two in one day tournament. two in one day that does uh, baseball state tournament is in Appleton where the Timber Rattlers play we're getting that time of the year kid kids are out. School wrapping up. Yelich on the ground. That is going to roll through for a base hit. So Yelich with a two out hit. He got on top of a fastball up and away. Able to get on top of it and roll it into center field. Beat the shift. You saw. Start over in the hole between second and first, and inning stays alive with two outs, giving Willie a chance. That's a fourth base runner with two outs. Yelich walked with two outs in the second inning, and Adamas, who homered in his first at bat, gets another chance with men on. That was some battle in the second inning between Adamas and Eflin. Ten pitch at bat. And Adamas ultimately with a little half swing hit a grounder back to the mound pitch up and in tried to check his swing but rolled it back to Eflin for the final out tough break popped his 10th home run of the year in the first a little frustrated as Willie after missing that that was down the middle. Three weeks on the injured list with an ankle injury. Just returned yesterday. Hunter Renfro returned Tuesday. Been out with a hamstring injury. Brewers are slowly getting some of their big pieces back. There's hope that Brandon Woodruff will return soon. Freddie Peralta still going to be a while. But there is expectation that he will come back and he'll be healthy for the home stretch of the season Peralta no significant damage in that shoulder a wave and a miss Adamas chases one that curveball from Eflin and it's no balls and two strikes got to get Omar Narvaez back he cannot get that those two pop two negative tests together you know back to back days right. So he can uh, get off the COVID list. He says he feels fine. He's ready to go. Oh, and to the count. Yelich the runner at first, and Adamas takes a ball, a high fastball. Yeah, it doesn't matter how you feel when you have a positive COVID test. To protect the others, you still might be contagious and gotta gotta clear it with negative tests, and they're having a hard time getting those negative tests from Narvaez. I know he's frustrated. But the good news is when he does finally get through it, he'll be ready to go right back in. One and two the count. Adamas takes again. 2 2 now. Willie becomes a much more disciplined hitter with two strikes. He's a free swinger until he gets to two strikes. From 0 2 to 2 2. And Adamas fouls it away. He's hanging tough. Yeah, a lot of guys have the philosophy the first two strikes are for me. 
the last one's for the team. So you shorten up a little bit, just try to put the ball in play. At least some guys do that. I feel like that's an old school approach. Yeah. Nowadays, a, most hitters are taking their swing, no matter what, no yeah. matter what count. Doesn't matter what the count is, same approach. Count hardly plays into it. Two and two now to Adamas. And again. Fouling a pitch off, keeping himself alive, and adding to this pitch count for Eflin. The next offering will be his 90th pitch of the day. This is going to be short starts for both of these guys. Corbin Burns and Eflin. Yelich ready to run it first. Two outs in the fourth in a 1 1 game. There goes Yelich swinging a foul. Big cut by Adamas that time. Yelich has been very aggressive on the bases lately. Trying to get himself into scoring position. Yelich had a stolen base last night off his good buddy JT Real Muto, his former teammate with the Marlins. Yelich with eight steals. Adamas, who saw 10 pitches last time up, will see eight pitches at least in this at bat. Ooh, close pitch. <laughs> Willie was waiting for the pain. <laughs> Tough to take that one. Mm, now 3 2. Now Yelich will be off with the pitch. Oh, that didn't miss by much. It has been a tight strike zone today. I think Tomlinson, the home plate umpire, has been consistent. Missed with that cut fastball. Outfield is very deep for the Phillies. 3 2, two outs. Yelich takes off, and Adamas fouls another one off. Although with Christian Yelich in a 3 2 count with two outs, even a gapper is going to score him no matter how deep they're playing. He'd love to jog around. Eflin has thrown 92 pitches. Adamas is responsible for 26 of them <laughs> in his three at bats. 3 2, Yelich goes. <laughs> Another foul ball. Get your sprints in, Christian. He's going to be good and loose. Hunting that mistake. These are maddening at bats for a pitcher, especially after you get the first two men out. We'll do it again. Adamas pulls one foul. And Yelich, spry as ever, hustling back to first. Doesn't seem like he's slowed down at all, has he? Seems pretty fast to me. Yeah, running uh, on a number of 3 2 pitches. That's one of my favorite things to watch. Christian Yelich run. Yeah, me too. Getting bonus running time for Yelich. <laughs> Pitch number 12 of the at bat here to Adamas. Yelich goes and Adamas pulls that one foul. <laughs> Willie Adamas has eight foul balls. Seven of the foul balls have come with two strikes. We'll do it again. Yelich goes. And Adamas in the air, right center, hit deep, but not deep enough. Castellanos makes a catch. Man, was that a battle. Eflin has won them both, though. Still tied at one. Short starts for Eflin and Burns, but it's a low scoring affair. Bye.
your local Wisconsin Toyota dealer. Toyota, let's go places. By Cousin Subs, believe in better. And by West Bend, the silver lining. Roof is open, it's a beautiful day. Where would you rather be? These two pitchers been battling every at bat. It's been a grinder for them. 191 pitches between the two starters, and yet it's a 1 1 game. Here we are in the fifth inning. Corbin Burns back to work. Kyle Schwarber will lead off. That was a key at bat for Burns in the second inning. Schwarber struck out with the bases loaded. Burns has seven K's. He's walked four. And he's got the top of the order here, third time around in the fifth. You never know it's been a grinder for both of these pitchers looking at the line score, though. We've already had 12 runners left on base combined. Brewers have left seven. The Phillies five in the first four innings. Yeah, that's the only indication the lobs. There's been a ton of them. Schwarber in a 2 0 count. That one's in there. Mentioned his month of June. So if you go to the last three Junes, and remember 2020, there was no June baseball. So 19, 21, and last year. Or 19, 21, and this year, I should say. 27 home runs for Kyle Schwarber in the last three months of June. Yeah, when the weather heats up, so does he. That's the most in baseball. In the last three years, or the last three Junes. Otani's on that list. Acuna, Alonzo, Cruz, Machado, some of the biggest home run hitters in the game. No surprise on that list, is there? It's been the month of Schwarber, the month of June. Three and one. That's a strike. Well, he didn't like that call. Remember Sunday Night Baseball in Philly, Schwarber? Yes. Angel Hernandez? Yeah, he had uh, pretty good snap. He finally cracked. Three and two. Schwarber fouls it away. This is one of the, the scenes of the year. Schwarber who normally doesn't give you a lot and he, he endured a few at bats and that's a full on little league snap right there. Very demonstrative. I, I had signs of like Earl Weaver or Lou Pinella. Managerial snaps from baseball lore and the final wave off was my favorite. <laughs> it's a swing and a miss but Caratini missed it. And Schwarber's going to reach. So that's going to be a strikeout for Burns. Probably a pass ball. That ball was in the air. It was not in the dirt. The cutter. Off the end of the glove. And I would imagine that's going to be a pass ball. It as, will indeed be a pass ball. Difficult as that is for me to say. So it's a strikeout, but it's a leadoff base runner. And here is Reese Hoskins. This is one of those games. Manager is wearing out that gum. One one game fifth inning. Both bullpens are busy. Miguel Sanchez who is throwing in the second inning is back up. He would be the closer for the starter. On this day, every manager's got one. Starter struggling. A guy designated to get him out of a jam to try to keep the game intact. Nick Nelson is back up and throwing as well. He was also throwing in the second inning. Lead man on after a strikeout and a pass ball. Hoskins in a 2 0 count.
Hoskins has big power to the opposite field and we saw that last night. Two run home run. He's hit five homers now. In this ballpark in his career in just eight games. See if he's got the green light. Does not takes a strike. That was a gift. Yeah. At 3 0 pitch, sometimes you get a little extra off the edge. Caratini using the pitch comm system here. Burns got the one he wants. Three balls and a strike. That one's in there. Mm, that one right on the edge. Can't put it in a better spot than that. Burns now in a 3 2 count. And a lot of times that has not been a strike today. Home plate umpire opening it up a bit. Please do. Full count with Schwarber at first. Here comes Burns. Swinging a foul. Had a good cut at it though. And those last two strike calls. That'll get into a hitter's head and you're going to be swinging anything close. You want to leave it up to the umpire. That was right at the bottom of the zone. Good pitch. Pitch number 109 for Burns. We're in the fifth inning with nobody out. Is Omar Narvaez? That's a good sign. If he's back in the dugout, that means he is yeah. ready to return. Yeah, around his teammates. That's uh, that's always good. Good find. By our crew. I wonder if he heard us talking about it. Scurried into the dugout. I'm back. Base hit center field. Good piece of hitting there by Hoskins. He was fooled on the pitch, but he slowed the bat down and serves one into center field. His first hit of the day. Shortening up that stroke. The team approach with two strikes on the slider. Not a bad pitch, but a pretty good swing to get the base hit. So the first two reach here in the fifth. Yeah, Bryce Harper coming up. So Craig Council deliberating down there. Went to the phone, but this is the matchup you want your best out there for. And Burns will face Harper. Two on, nobody out. Burns has struck out Harper twice. 1 1 game, fifth inning. The most pitches in a game Burns has thrown this year is 107 prior to today. He's at 111 right now in the fifth, and no outs in the fifth. It's not too early to call on that triple play, is it? No, no, it's never too early for I that. Think, I think this is a good spot for one. That 107 pitch outing. That was against the Pirates back in April, but he went seven innings. He's had three outings when he's thrown over 100 pitches. Seven innings, six and two thirds, and six innings. Where is the triple play right now in your mind, Rock? Is that a is that a line drive out or? I don't see a conventional triple play. Peterson's way off the bag at third. Yeah, that's really your only chance. One one. Harper lines one to Les. That could have been it. Could have been. Runners did a good job. They held their ground. Yeah, Schwarber, you know, not too far off the bag. I think Roddy was thinking about it throw to second base. <laughs> Line drive. He held his ground. Did Kyle Schwarber and is able to get back. We just needed Schwarber to be a bad base runner for a moment. See how far Hoskins was off the bag. Line drive out for the first out, and Craig Council has seen enough. Harper left standing with a bat in his hands. So Burns 
will exit. Four and a third. Eight strikeouts at this moment, only one run. Tino, play to win. Beautiful Thursday afternoon. Odd game going here today, folks. It's going to have some dramatics, you feel like. Burns is out. High volume pitch count, four and a third innings, only one run. Eight Ks. He's got two out there, his responsibility. And the Phillies, with one out and two men on, will face Miguel Sanchez. The Gruber Law Offices, one call, that's all, called to the pen, Ron. Yep, a three up, three down, eighth inning against the Padres on Saturday. He's been pretty good. Opponent batting average for Miguel Sanchez at 148. Opposition four for 27. Second time he's been with the Brewers this year. And both of the stints have come, or did come, in the month of May. Now he's here in June. And here is Nick Castellanos. Phillies with three hits. Scored a run in the second inning on a fielder's choice off the bat of Stott. Two on, one out. Sanchez looking for that ground ball double play to get him out of this. Now it misses. He has the ground ball potential, does Miguel Sanchez. Good two seamer, really good change up. Brewers still carrying eight relievers at this point. Man, that's a strike. That's another gift. So suddenly the zone is opened a little for home plate umpire Nate Tomlinson. I think we're all for that. But these hitters are going to have to make a quick adjustment. Pitches that were not called strikes early are now being called strikes. Just looking for consistency. One ball, one strike with two on. Sanchez deals. Castellanos was late. Kind of a miss. Man, that had some bite to it. 95 mile an hour fastball. Fastball and changeup move very similar. 95 with the fastball. You know, mid 80s with the changeup. Actually, upper 80s with the changeup. One ball, two strikes on Castellanos. Mm, off his foot. Sanchez coming into this game with some good vibes, feeling good about how he's pitching. Face the Padres Saturday, as Rock mentioned, and a perfect eighth inning, and they needed it. This is his second go round with the Brewers this year. He was pitching well in Triple A. Castellanos, that sounded like a broken bat, and that is going to fall for a base hit. So now the Phillies have him loaded again. Schwarber to third base. Hoskins to second. Castellanos with his first hit of the night. Did, of the a good, day. did a good job staying on that pitch. That was 96. A fastball sinker down and away. Actually away, but up a little bit. Right off the end of the bat, able to dump it in front of Hunter Renfro. Had a very good read by Kyle Schwarber. He wouldn't be able to score anyway, not with Renfro out there. That snaps into two pieces. But the Phillies have him loaded. And here is JT Real Muto. Most teams, you say, well, we got the catcher at the plate. This is a good double play chance. But that's not the case with Real Muto. Not saying he won't bounce into a double play, but he can really run. He can hit the ball hard. He hits it on the ground hard. He's going to be able to he'll be able to turn a double play, but anything routine, maybe not. Four grand slams in his career. He takes a ball. Notice uh, Real Muto chokes up on the bat ever so slightly. 
had a stolen base last night. He's only grounded into one double play this year. One ball, one strike to count. Philly stranded the bases loaded in the second inning. They've left five already. And Sanchez trying to add to that number. Off his foot. One and two the count. Getting started with a strikeout, but a pass ball on the pitch allowed Schwarber to reach. Hoskins singled, Castellano singled, and neither one of them hit all that hard. One ball, two strikes to count. Sanchez deals in the dirt. Caratini smothers it. Good He's play. Done a good job of that today. Doing a really good job blocking pitches in the dirt, and he's had some tough chances today. You know, he's kicking himself with that pass ball. Yeah. Catchers are hard on themselves as a lot, typically. Two, two. Full count now. Nowhere to put him. Adamas and Urias hoping for a ground ball up the middle, the Keystone combo. Three and two, and that one is in the air, a high fly ball. Schwarber will tag. Yelich, not much of an arm. He'll make the catch, and Schwarber will score, and the Phillies have the lead. Sacrifice fly in an RBI for JT Real Muto. But again, the Phillies score a run on an out. Sacrifice a fielder's choice in the second inning. And Real Mutz are able to lift this one deep enough in the left field to sc score Schwarber from third base. Doesn't run all that well, but able to score easily. Brewers would be happy with only one run across in this situation. Bases loaded, one out. Yeah, now I got to finish it off and go to work offensively, which has been a challenge for the Brewers recently. D.D. Gregorius, first ball swinging, pulls it foul. If Sanchez retires Gregorius, that run would be an unearned run against Burns. If it was a wild pitch, it would have been a, an earned run. A swinging strikeout, but a pass ball that allowed Schwarber to reach. Gregorius, little half swing. That is just out of the reach of Peterson. In the left field, in to score is Hoskins. And it's going to be an RBI double, an excuse me double for D.D. Gregorius. Three to one Philadelphia. That yeah, ball seems to be bouncing in the way of the Phillies as of late. You know, this winning streak and you know, the check swing just out of the reach of Jace Peterson. Didn't mean to. Put in a good spot right down the line for a double. Another run in. Man, that one hurts. Well, that's the difference between a team that is hot and things are going their way and a team that is not. And everything going against him right now. Yep, a good pitch ended up as a double and an RBI. And now second and third with two outs. Chris Hook having a chat here with Sanchez. Phillies have two in. How about Gregorius? A home run away from a cycle after an 0 for yesterday. Bryson Stott was a triple away from the cycle yesterday for the Phillies. 
So Alec Bohm now. Dangerous at bat. Two outs here in the fifth and the Phillies finally break through. After stranding a lot of runners. Here's a 1 0. One ball, one strike. Burns with four to third, three hits, three runs, all earned. Now that inherited runner statistic can be very deceiving, right? I mean, Sanchez comes in, he gives up a sack fly, then a check swing double, two inherited runners on his line. Two and all the count. A swing and a miss from Bohm. Well, Burns had such a great start to the day as well. He struck out the side, had everything working. And then that second inning really did him in. He was able to navigate around some damage. But two inherited runners come in to score in an inning that could have gone better for Burns. On the ground to short and Adamas had to play a tough hop. He makes the play to win the inning. But the Phillies score twice. They break the one one tie. They lead it three to one now. Middle of the order coming up. Rowdy Telez will get us started as we go to the bottom of the fifth. Game series starting on Monday June 20th. On top of the action there's a Miller High Life Monday and a kids in seniors day. Get your seats at Brewers.com. Slash tickets. Well, that'll be a big series for sure. The Cardinals lost today. They got swept by the Rays. By the way, you see that game took an hour and 54 minutes. No kidding, right? The Rays and the Cardinals. Yeah. One, five, four. And Tampa Bay swept St. Louis, so the Brewers know they'll have that top spot in the central when they hit the road they'd like to add to it they're down three to one now here is Nick Nelson in for Zach Eflin this is a guy that will go multiple innings two and a third scoreless innings with a walk and a couple of strikeouts and stranded a couple of inherited runners on Sunday's win against the Angels I see his numbers overall earning an average just under four 26 strikeouts 27 and two thirds Innings with 13 walks, so wait him out. He might get a walk. Eflin goes four innings, four hits, gave up an earned run, walked three, struck out two. Short starts for both starters today. Rowdy Telez takes a ball. Burns finishing line, four and a third with three hits. Three runs, two were earned. And he walked four, struck out eight. ERA to 2-6-0. Big Rowdy with a walk his first time up. Flew out to right in the third. Nick, Nick Nelson can eat up some innings. Leads all Philly relievers in innings pitch. Actually ranks second in the National League in relief innings. Ten of 14 appearances going at least two innings. Two and one and Telez pulls one down the line that's going to get to the wall. Rowdy Telez on his way to second base with a double. Good start to the fifth inning for the Brook crew as Telez is aboard for the second time. Well the approach continues to impress Sophia I know you had a chance to visit with Rowdy about that approach. 
Yeah, and he's just trying to find a consistent approach there. And he said that that at bat right there, that's the one that he's been missing. He said the extra base hits and the homers. He feels like he's been able to have a consistent approach and getting back to the approach that he had at the beginning of the season. Remember, he was the National League Player of the Week the first week of May when he put together that eight RBI game. And so he said, you know, I've been really happy with the plan. He said, I've been happy with the approach. He had multi hit games in each of the first two games of this series, but just frustrated that the extra base hits and the homers weren't there for him, not getting that consistent hard contact. He hadn't homered since May 29th. That was against Miles Michaelis on the last road trip against the Cardinals. And so he's leading the Brewers in a number of offensive categories, hits, home runs, doubles, total bases, extra base hits. So I'm sure he's going to be really happy with that at bat. He said that's just the, the at bat, the ball that he's been looking for. You know, those home runs, they come in bunches. I mean, you can go for a while without one, even though you're making some pretty good contact. The key for him, and he always has said this since he's joined the Brewers, is to stay inside the baseball, not be real pull conscious. He stayed inside that last pitch. It was a changeup, and because he was inside of it, he was able to keep it fair, not pulling it foul. He's having a nice series. He's five for nine now in this series against the Phillies. With a struggling offense, Telez has been one of the bright spots. Urias fouls it away. One and two the count on Luis Urias. Urias walked his last time up. Both teams getting into their bullpen early. Phillies with two in the top of this fifth inning. RBIs from Real Muto and Gregorius. See if Arias can answer right here. One and two the count. And that's down and away. Two balls, two strikes. Fair amount of change ups from Nelson so far in this inning. Brewers just one for seven with runners in scoring position. With runners on, I should say. Got one in scoring position here and a swing and a miss. Who strikes out. Out number one. Pretty good fastball down at the bottom of the strike zone at 98 miles an hour. So Nelson can rush it up there pretty good. Threw it right by him. Change up then fastball. And now one for eight today with runners on base. Brewers on this homestand hitting just. 103 starting play today on the homestand with runners on base. At some point, the floodgates are going to open, and you hope that is soon. Playing from behind often. Hobie Milner preparing for the Philly sixth inning. Jim Henderson, the bullpen coach, looking on. No balls and a strike on McCutcheon. And when you have a struggling offense, not only does it put a lot of pressure on every one of the hitters that's in the lineup, everybody that goes up there wants to be the get the big hit, the big home run. It also puts pressure on the pitchers as well to make that perfect pitch. They realize you give up three or four runs, it might cost you a game because your offense isn't scoring runs. It's a snowball effect. It affects every part of the game. One and two the count. Nelson deals and a swing at a miss. McCutcheon strikes out. He's got a big fastball, that's for sure. Rowdy Telez is able to send him on a change up. That fastball at 98 again, the same velocity that got Luis Arias. This one up at the top of the strike zone. Much more difficult to get a piece of. Here's Jace Peterson with two away. Telez at that leadoff double, still at second base. And a strike to Peterson. Mm -hmm. 
Nelson coming to the Phillies this offseason from the Yankees. The hard thrower. Three other minor leaguers involved in that deal. Phillies have been right about him. He struggled as a member of the Yankees. Even though he throws hard, he had a hard time throwing strikes. Been better this year. Peterson rolls to first. Hoskins will go to the bag. And a promising start with a Rowdy Telez double. Ends up with a zero in the fifth for the Brewers. Three to one, Philadelphia. We go to the sixth. Annual Brewers Tailgate. Brewers Group tickets are on sale now with packages starting at just six bucks. Let's start planning your event today at Brewers.com slash groups. A lot of kids in the ballparks today. Some groups from uh, the schools. Good to have them here. It's a beautiful day for baseball. Brewers are down three to one. Colby Milner trying to keep the Phillies right where they are as we go to the sixth inning. Little guy's up to no good. Got the banky in his pocket. <laughs> so, uh, can't be fun at the old ballpark. Start him young. Dad's got a glove. Mom's up there on little sister duty. Here we go to the six. Milner's first offering inside for a ball. Bryson Stott drove in a run on a fielder's choice in the second inning. Corbin Burns four and a third today with three runs, two earned runs allowed. The 2 0 misses. See Burns again against the Mets. That could be a showdown in New York. Brewers and Mets. At this point, a couple of first place teams. And Milner walks him on four straight. Lead off walk to start the sixth inning. Gives us a chance to hear a quick word from our friends at Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. So a lead man on here and Mickey Moniak the ninth place hitter shows bunt did he go after it he did not ball one Dodgers and White Sox playing a day game today L.A. leading seven to five they lost the opener Tuesday. Got shut out, and then the Dodgers won yesterday, and they lead it today. Dodgers at 36 and 20. There's a bunt. Milner thought about second. We'll sling it over to first for the out. A sacrifice bunt, Bill Schroeder. How about that with a two-run lead? Bottom of the order, getting it done. Nice sacrifice bunt. Kind of like a. Uh, Haley's Comet almost extinct like the dodo bird. <laughs> <laughs> How about the other team in Los Angeles they lost again yesterday 14 straight. Yeah. Rough go there man angels Joe Madden got let go. Did you hear they went up with the Nickelback themed walk up music. You know the band Nickelback. Mm -hmm. Polarizing band love them or hate them. Anyway every player went to the plate with a nickelback song and it didn't work. I could have told him that. Do you have any recommendations for him? As I, far I as think I think Drake would probably work. Music yeah. Maybe switch genres maybe. Maybe go to the. Old 97s perhaps. What would be your choice, Rock? Oh, you know my band. 
There's only so much dancing queen to go around. Right. <laughs> A little ABBA. <laughs> Is it ABBA on tour again, Rock? I don't know. I think so. I think I you know. need to find out where they are. Find out a tour near you and go see your favorite band. That happening. <laughs> Crank it up on my Sonos player at home. Yeah. Two balls and a strike to count. Schwarber takes ball three. Is that not the greatest Sonos? Do you have that at home? I do not. Is that a everything? Is that a paid endorsement or is this a, no, a no, free endorsement? No, no, I'm not getting any money out of this, but it's amazing. I mean, you work all you, you you work all your music from your phone. You speak it into existence, or do you actually? No, I don't know how to do there that. Yet? No, that that's not me. The bouncing ball to second. Urias will make the play. So a good pitch there by Milner on a three-one count. You got Schwarber to roll over. Second out. Stott ends up at third base. Different zones in every room of the house. You can play something different in every zone, all at the same time. Amazing. What are you going to think of next? Technology, internet, TV, maybe. <laughs> Robotic umpires. <laughs> <clears throat> Here's Reese Hoskins. Be a good time to give out the address to the ballpark, though, in case. Uh, Anybody from Sonos wanted to, you know, for the effort. I'm set. <laughs> they can't help me. Could use an upgrade. No balls and a strike. Outside a ball. One and one to Reese Hoskins. Swing and a miss. Good pitch. He took a little something off that. Went with the changeup. And the count one and two. Two men are out here in the sixth inning. Milner issuing a leadoff walk to start this inning. But a bunt and a ground out. Here's the one two. Fluttered one in once again. Another changeup. That one missed. Don't forget 12 teams will make it to the postseason this year six in each league adding two more it's typically been 10 the third division winner so the division winner with the third best record will not get the bye to the division series that would be the Brewers right now with the Mets and the Dodgers the two best records. And division winners, division leaders. Hey, a swing and a miss. Milner with the strikeout. Reese Hoskins goes down, runner at third, stranded. Three to one, Phillies lead it. Brewers coming to bat, bottom of the sixth inning. Needed that one. Day nights on Valley Sports Wisconsin. You can join host Travis Frank and Natalie Dillon. They share stories and adventures of outdoor enthusiasts in the upper Midwest. Do North Outdoors tonight at 6 p.m. on Valley Sports Wisconsin. Travis Frank has a lot of co-hosts. He's been kind of running through, kind of like you in the first few years of the Brewers. Yeah, a lot going on though up north. A lot of that's a thing. I mean, a lot of experts. Hasn't been able to get that consistent partner, you know what I mean? Connor Brogdon will take over for the Phillies. That was my issue for a while. Yeah. Of course, it's still going on, isn't it? Can't chase me away. Yeah, guys in and out of here all the time. <laughs> here is Hunter Renfro, and on the first pitch, deep into center field, way back and gone. The second solo homer of the game for the Brew Crew. Hunter Renfro goes deep, his tenth of the year. Yeah, man, maybe that'll get everybody going. Renfro had a couple of near misses in last night's game. Look at his center on that one. Both home runs for the Brewers coming to dead center. Adamas and Renfro, two players just returning from the injured list. Cutter out over the plate. Boy, Hunter Renfro doing a good job staying back. He was drifting a little bit his first couple of at-bats when he came back, but 
Stayed back nicely. That was a long one. 423 foot homer. Three to two game now. Phillies lead by one. And here is Victor Caratini. Well, tough to sit out two weeks, not go down the, to the minor leagues and get any at bats, and then come back and face major league pitching. But it didn't take Hunter long to get back into the groove. Boy, he was hot before he got hurt. Caratini out in front of an off speed pitch, change up. Brewers had a leadoff double last inning. Couldn't score. Renfro finally rings the bell. We've been waiting. Didn't have his heart in it, did he? I think he was shamed into it. <laughs> no balls, two strikes on Caratini. Switch hitting catcher. One and two now. Zach Eflin went four. You see Boxberger preparing for the Brewers. That was a big out for Milner to get the strikeout and strand a runner at third base. Yeah, got him on a really good breaking pitch. That strikeout to Hoskins. After walking the leadoff hitter, Stott, able to get out of it. Brogdon the third Philly pitcher. Eflin went four. Nelson a scoreless fifth inning and now Brogdon. Here's a one two Caratini little jam shot roller over to third. Home and save Caratini. Legs it out. A slow developing play and Caratini chug it all the way to first able to be one out for an infield hit. And Bum was on the shift. He had a ways to go. He had to go toward the line and in. And by the time he got there, and a little bit too late. So there's your tying run. And Brew was able to bring the go-ahead run to the plate. Long way to go. Got it over there, but late. Yeah, good wheels by Victor to get down the line. So a homer and an infield hit. Two hits today for Caratini. He is the tying run on the go ahead to run at the plate Tyrone Taylor shows bunt runs through it. Foul ball that got a piece of real Muto. I mean it's one thing to see. One sacrifice bunt in a big league game. What happens if we get two in a game can't be two could it. <laughs> No balls and a strike. Taylor with a base hit in the second hit a line drive to left field. It actually came with a runner at second base, but he hit it so hard. The runner Caratini did not have a chance to score. That's a ball on the ground throw to second base out there. That just dented it a little bit too much. You got a catcher that is about as quick as it gets. Getting out from behind home plate. Boy, he did a nice job getting out there, making a good throw. He's got a terrific arm. Got rid of it quickly to a strike to second base and able to get Caratini, the lead runner at second. Get that ball in the grass. You have a chance to execute the sacrifice. Wasn't able to do it. Dead in that baseball too much. Good play by Real Muto. Yesterday real Muto hit Jace Peterson running down the first baseline with a throw. The throw was clocked at 96 miles an hour. Flat footed with catcher's gear on. Gives you an idea of his arm strength. A lot of catchers in that exact scenario will just take the out at first base. Mm -hmm. Christian Yelich with a runner at first. Taylor is a threat to run. And certainly Brogdon knows that. Checks on him again. It's a big play with the top of the order coming up.
Yelich might be due to hit one out. Last home run May 11th. Takes a strike. As we play here on June 9th. Yeah, almost a month. Yelich is the team leader in walks. Hit for the cycle earlier this year. That was the day he had his last homer, May 11th, the last cycle. He's hit three cycles in his career, and they've all come against the Reds. That's never happened before. He was the sixth player to hit for the cycle three times in Major League history and the first to have three cycles against one team. It's not the Reds but it's the Phillies in their red uniforms as Yelich takes a strike that upset him right there a change up from Brogdon. Yeah that uh, strike zone starting to uh, expand a little bit for the home plate umpire it started a couple innings ago. Hitters have to make the adjustment. One and two the count. Taylor with great speed at first he's the tying run. Six inning a run is in Yelich takes a ball. Yelich had a hit his last time up. He's one for two. He's four for ten in this series. Needs a big one here. The 2 2 and Yelich late. Fouls it away. 97 with a fastball. I feel like bullpen has had its struggles this year, but during this winning streak, they've been really good. Able to keep the Brewers off the board. And yeah, before that, the Angels. Phillies have won a season high six consecutive games. Swept the Angels. Yelich in the left field, slicing. Schwarber is there. Second out. Pretty good approach by Yelich. Hit it hard, but right at Schwarber. You love to see Christian Yellows going to the opposite field. He's been doing that a lot more during his homestand. Well, Adamas will get another shot here. He has had two long at bats, homered his first time up, and then had double digit pitch counts in his next two at bats, both resulting in an out. He's on the first one here, and he fouls it away. Check the Powerball home run leaderboard. Telez with 10 homers. He's got company now. Adamas and Renfro with solo homers today. So you got three in double figures for the Brewers. Fourth in the National League and home runs as a team. Second in home runs, I should say. No balls, a strike in there. Strike two. Billy's had a snatch him back win late rally in the ninth inning off Josh Hader Tuesday night. A 10 nothing win yesterday. Now they lead 3 2. They won the last game of their series against the Giants. They had lost five in a row. Then they beat the Giants June 1st and on the off day fired Joe Girardi. And they've won five in a row since six in a row overall two of the wins since they let Girardi go have been ten to nothing final scores that yeah, right their offense has kicked it into a new gear they have two ten run games a nine run game and a seven run game in this winning streak takes the pressure off of every other aspect of the game when you're scoring runs like that. 
Here's a 2 2 and Adamas fouls it away. It's got to be patient. Sometimes, you know, offenses are. Have good stretches, bad stretches. Brewers just got to grind through this one. You know, it's going to turn around at some point, but you'd rather have it sooner than later. Two and two, the count. Willie Adamas is going to win the Louis Aparicio Award today. 16 foul balls he's had in this game, Rob. Wow. From the go-go Sox, I got it. He was a guy who fouled off a lot of pitches. Yeah, right. So was sometimes Rich. on purpose. So was Richie Ashburn with the Phillies. He fouled off a lot of pitches in a row. I think he has the record. That's a more appropriate connection. Yeah. Good Former uh, broadcaster. Here's a two-two. Three balls and two strikes. Story was that Louis Aparicio was so upset. At Charlie Comiskey, the White Sox owner, because you know baseballs were expensive. Yeah. He just kept fouling pitches off, dumping them in the seats to upset his owner. Yeah. I don't think Mark Adonacio cares. Runner goes 3-2, and Adamas pops it up right up the pipe. Who makes the call? It is Gregorius who makes a catch, and the side is retired. But the Brewers get within a run. Hunter Renfro with a leadoff homer, a bomb. 423 foot home run to center field. His 10th of the year, and it's a 3 2 Philly lead after six. Burns, reigning Cy Young Award winner, got the ball today. He was not himself. He went four and a third, and giving up two earned runs. He struck out eight. Didi Gregorius. Is now a home run shy of the cycle. Three for three had a key hit as the Phillies took the lead in the fifth inning at an RBI double. Solo home runs from Willie Adamas and Hunter Renfro today. And it's a 3 2 ball game. We head to the seventh inning. Both starters out early. Burns four to third, three runs, two earned. Zach Eflin went four innings with one earned run. And it's going to be Brad Boxberger out of the Milwaukee bullpen. Well, he was terrific on Tuesday on a scoreless inning. He pitched the seventh inning. A couple of ground outs and a strikeout. They had to get through the top of the Phillies order on Tuesday. Bryce Harper will start it for the Phillies. He hit a shot in the fifth. It was caught by Telez. Line drive out. He's 0 for 3. Second to Goldschmidt in the National League in OPS starting play today. Harper with a current on base plus slugging of 977. Goldschmidt was the player of the month in the National League. Harper, Goldschmidt, Mookie Betts, Pete Alonzo all having big years offensively in the National League. If you're handing out your quarter MVP candidates, pretty good candidates at this point. Harper's third in the league in runs, third in total bases, leads the National League in slugging, second in OPS. Activity in the Philly bullpen. Dominguez. Sir Anthony Dominguez. They close her in the waiting, this guy, that you just saw in the bullpen. He'll be looking at Telez, Urias, and McCutcheon coming up. Harper into center field, and he's watching this one fly. Bryce Harper hits the scoreboard. A mammoth home run from Harper. Number 15 on the year, and the Phillies get the run right back. 4 to 2 Philadelphia. And back to back games with long home runs from Bryce Harper. Yep, one down the right field line yesterday. This from the dead center. Off the bottom of the scoreboard for Harper. There's a fastball. Down, right down the middle of the plate around the knees, and Harper drops the head on it. And see you later. 
Nobody has any more power than he does when he gets a hold of one. Bangs off the scoreboard, off the American Family Insurance sign. Phillies hit four homers last night. And Harper was one of those four, and now he's got home runs in consecutive games. First home run of the day for the Phillies. Nick Castellanos bats. One and two on Castellanos. Boxberger delivers outside ball two. And Boxberger has featured a really good changeup all season long. Harper hit a fastball. Fastball changeup. He will throw the slider as well. There's a changeup. Now it misses. By the way, a little housekeeping on uh, Burns's line, by the way. So it is now one earned run when you recreate the inning. Kind of re, uh, recreate that inning. Three runs, one earned as Castellanos draws the walk. Because of the pass ball. That's right. The hit came with two outs for Gregorius. <laughs> Meaning that the strikeout would have created an out without the pass ball, and Gregorius would never have gotten in that bat. So they went through and reworked it, and you may have seen the official box score show two earned runs, but it is officially one. No consolation for Burns, though. That's a strike to Real Muto. That's not a real animal. It was bark at the park day here. Is that Hank? Two days ago. <laughs> Supposed to be Hank. There's a shot up the middle of Rios right there. Adamas cuts across and a double play. That's a really nice play right there. That's a tough hop. Handled nicely, able to turn the double play. Second double play that Real Muto has bounced into this year. Nice play by Arias. Good flip to Willie, and he's able to turn the double play. 4 6 3 double play. And that eliminates a base runner after the Castellanos walk. So base is empty, two outs. And it's DD Gregorius, who is a home run away from the cycle. The Phillies have not had a cycle. Since David Bell, the current Reds manager, did it in 2004. They had a chance at a cycle last night. By the way, that MTL Montreal, when they were in the National League the Expos there's some discussions that Montreal might might get a team once again I'd like to see it I, I miss going to Montreal uh, good, I, good town I'm with you man I think that'd be great on the ground to second base no cycle here for Gregorius and the inning is over Bryce Harper hits a mammoth homer off the scoreboard Phillies get their run back and they lead 4 2. We go to the bottom of the seventh, stretch time at American Family Field.
Nashville if they call the Brewers by 10 o'clock tomorrow morning they get 40 tickets to a Friday night game in the Miller Lite beer pen this offer courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Lite say hello to all our friends at the sandbar in Cassville Cassville would you go I'm at, would you say I'm at J and J's or would you say I'm at J's or would you say I'm at the sandbar I'm at the sandbar I like yeah. the sandbar yeah right yeah sandbar well that sounds like a good rally tavern right there 27,306 the announced attendance today at American Family Field Sir Anthony Dominguez the hard throwing right hander is on the mound he'll face Rowdy Telez the Brewers down two now bottom of the seventh inning scoreless inning with a couple of strikeouts his last time out that was against the Angels and he slings one in at 97 that was back on the 4th of June and so it's been a while for him Brewers have popped two solo homers Adamas and Renfro to with a walk and a double today. Brewers running into the hottest team in the National League, the Phillies. Winners of six consecutive games. The Braves have won seven in a row. Right now, the Mets still lead the division. So I guess we'll say the Braves are the hottest team in the National League. And then the Phillies. Phillies nine and a half back of the Mets in the East in third place. Braves are seven back. That's what it looks like in the East right now. Braves winning the World Series last year. Mets have dropped a couple of games in San Diego. They've lost the first two in that series. Got blown out last night. Telez on the ground. Hoskins takes the big hop, and there is out number one. Brewers are going to see the Mets next week. It's the last three city road trip in this run of three consecutive three city road trips. Brewers are going to Washington, D.C., three with the Nats, day off in New York, and then three with the Mets. I guess, regardless of how this game turns out, disappointing homestand for the Brewers after all the road games that they've had to endure. They figure you come back home and you know, get healthy, get some home cooking. Hasn't been the case. It is fleeting in this game. Brewers will have the Nats, the Mets, and the Reds on the next road trip. Boy, how good were the Brewers sitting, winning the first two games in the Cup Series, in that four game series. It was a really challenging road trip, a lot of injuries. And they have not been able to win since, but this is what's coming up. Yet the Cardinals will be the next home game on the 20th. That's a four gamer with St. Louis, and the mighty Blue Jays are coming to town. That's some of the more entertaining players in the game there in Toronto. Yeah, no kidding. They're 10 games over, but they are seven games back, the Blue Jays. The Yankees are rolling. First team to 40 wins in baseball. The New York Yankees. The Yankees are 23 and 7 at home. Mm. The Yankees are going to be here in Milwaukee this year. That's in September. That's what the AL East looks like. It's a good division. Red Sox starting to play better. How many teams are going to come out of the AL East and make the postseason? Arias takes a ball. Three and two. The countdown on Luis. Astros, Twins, Yankees, division leaders in the American League. Mets, Dodgers, and Brewers in the NL. Here's a 3 2. Arias hanging tough. Another guy out of this Phillies bullpen slinging it in there in the upper 90s, 98 miles an hour for Dominguez. The 
Brewers need a base runner. Down two here in the seventh. And he got him. Maria strikes out. 99 that time. Every pitch to Luis Arias a fastball except for one slider. Best fastball the at bat right there. Threw it right by him. Harper deep in thought after his long home run. The life of a DH. What do you do between those at bats? It's not as easy as it looks to be the designated hitter. A lot of time to think about an at bat. When you're in the field, theoretically, you're not supposed to be thinking about your at bats or your swings. You're thinking about defense. But as the designated hitter, well, it's easy to get into your head when things are going bad. The Brewers DH, Andrew McCutcheon at the plate. Because Bryce Harper doesn't have too many stretches where things are going bad. One and one to count. McCutcheon at the plate with two outs. Two balls and a strike. Ninety nine with a fastball once again. And it's got some sink on it. Yeah. Cuts and thought it was low. Sounded low. <laughs> two two. Peterson do next. McCutcheon would love to get him an at bat here in this inning. And a swing and a miss. Three up and three down. Back to back K's to finish off the inning. And it's four two Philadelphia as we go to the eighth. Field and add a Cy Young to your bobblehead collection on Sunday, June 26. The first 35,000 ticketed fans at the ballpark. That's against the Toronto Blue Jays. We'll get a limited edition Corbin Burns bobble presented by U.S. Cellular. Get your seats at Brewers.com/slash tickets. Beautiful sunny day here in Milwaukee. Brewers find themselves trailing by two as we head to the Philadelphia eighth inning. These guys are way up there. Good spot. Brand new uh, deck out there. We ought to do a game from up there, Rock. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Whenever you want. When are you coming back? I'll be back. Next homestand. Actually, I'm going on the road. Doing uh, the three games in D.C. Tim Dillard and I will be up there in the nosebleed section at Nationals Park. Highest perch in the big leagues. Mm, it is a joy. <laughs> joy to call a game from there. <laughs> Here's Trevor Kelly. He'll try to keep the Phillies at four. It's almost as if they forgot to put the press box in when they built the stadium. I think that's the case. It's like somebody walked around going, well, look at this great stadium. And it is a great ballpark. Oh, wait a minute. We forgot to put a press box in. And a view of the capital from the press box. There are there are amazing views. Yeah. From uh, from up top. I was in that ballpark. You know, for the playoffs, they have an auxiliary booth. It's much better. Boom! A broken bat right to Urias. You mean it's lower? It's it's two levels lower. It's about where our. Broadcast position is. It's why can't a, why can't we use I, that? I I know. I, I felt a little slighted. Who's using that when you know during the regular season? Where it is Bob Costas and Joe Buck were the ones who uh, got that done. So anyway, when you go in and do a playoff game in D.C., it's a whole different game. I was there in the NLCS in uh, 2019. Down in that auxiliary oh, booth. It's amazing. 
they have the clout to get things done. Yeah. Those two guys. Those, those are those are the guys to you get know. it done. Yeah, you're getting there. I mean, you're getting close to that kind of clout, but maybe in a couple of years. No chance. That's why I love this ballpark so much. The booth. Best seat in the house. Such a great spot. It is. Stock fouls it away. Put it this way in, in D.C. in National Park. There are no lights higher than us. Right. And the highest foul ball. Imagine that the highest foul ball would get halfway to you. <laughs> Great view of everything but the game. You do get mesmerized by uh, looking out over Washington D.C. and Capitol building. Although they're building condos out there yes. right in that blocking lot, off the views. A lot of condos. Yeah. You can still see the Capitol. So yep, yeah, we'll have those three games for you on Valley Sports Wisconsin. The Saturday and Sunday games are day games rock. If you need to adjust your viewing schedule. Since you'll be on assignment. <laughs> Saturday is a 305 first pitch central time. Four o'clock in D.C. and then Sunday is a noon start. A swing and a miss. Stott strikes out. Two gone here in the eighth inning for Kelly. Brewers have announced their three pitchers. And uh, two of the three for the Nationals are set. Going to see Aaron Ashby, Eric Lauer. And Jason Alexander. Patrick Corbin has won a couple of games since the Brewers saw the Nationals last. It's a good matchup there, that Saturday matchup with the two lefties, Corbin and Lauer. Nationals are struggling, though. Brewers are hope to keep them that way. Mickey Moniak. Hot shot foul. I think the consensus is to weather the storm of this next road trip, which will be nine games in 10 days away from Milwaukee. Weather that storm, and get back here in good shape in the standings, and then the schedule starts to turn in your favor. Yeah, travel schedule really turns around. The Brewers, a heavy home schedule after the All Star break, especially September. And that's when you want your home games for sure down the stretch. Looks like they'll have their catcher back Omar Narvaez. Who's been in covid protocols the covid IL. Nothing worse than being out of the lineup when your team's struggling. And Omar was really swinging about well before he. Got covid. Two balls two strikes. Kelly facing Moniak here and that one misses inside three and two now. Coming up for the Brewers in the eighth inning. Chase Peterson Hunter Renfro and Victor Caratini. Right now two runs down. This game is winnable for Milwaukee but. At some point you got to start hitting. Brewers in danger of. A one and six homestand. After they won the opener against the San Diego Padres in a major snatch em back win to start the homestand. Here's have scored seven runs in the last six games, including today. And Moniak draws the walk. Second walk for him. He's 0 for 1 today. Two walks and a sack bunt is Mickey Moniak. And that's going to bring Schwarmer to the plate, top of the order. Well, 
Well, four hits yesterday, but Schwarber is 0 for 4 today. He has been a part of two of the key at bats, though. He struck out with the bases loaded in the second. And then he struck out to lead off the fifth. But Caratini could not secure the pitch from Burns, a pass ball. And then the Phillies would go on and score two runs. Kind of opened the door for Philadelphia. Burns would only get one out. He was lifted from the game at that point. RBIs from Rio Muto and Gregorius, and the Phillies took the lead and they have maintained their lead. Harper added on in the seventh. Hey, you hold a team to four runs, you're going to win a few games, but not the way the offense has been going. With a lot of pressure on the pitchers. Two outs, two and all to count on Schwarber. A strike in there. Got to have this one if you're Kelly. Can't afford to go down anymore. Schwarber, not exactly the guy you want to face in a spot like this. The side armor has to throw a strike. Schwarber, fifth in the league in homers. He sends that one deep to right, and he has knocked one out of here. Two run blasts. You could feel it coming. Schwarber's 15th of the year. Can't walk a number nine hitter. And to get to the top of this order, not the way they're swinging the bats. Kyle Schwarber gives the Phillies a four run lead, just like that. Two outs, nobody on. You walk the number nine hitter, and then Schwarber knocks one out of here. To extend the lead. A no doubter. And Schwarber continues his torrid June. Nobody's hit more home runs in the month of June, the last three Junes on record. He's at it again. No balls and a strike to Hoskins. Make it 0 2 now. Well, the job just got tougher now, down four runs with six outs to work with. Changes the pitching plan for Rob Thompson as well. I think the Dodgers have the best lineup in the National League, Rock, but I think the Phillies can. Certainly make a claim by season's end. I mean, this is a, a stacked lineup they have. Yeah, even the bottom of the order has been pretty good. I mean, Bohm's got big power. Gregorius having a big day today. All these guys can hit. Yeah, Stott has been swinging the bat well. Yeah. They're without Gene Segura, the former Brewer. He is going to miss significant time with a fractured finger on his throwing hand. It's a tough lineup, though. Got a really good starting rotation. I mean, the Phillies. Defense a little suspect, but you know, the offense can power through that. Shattered bat. Kelly plays it on a bounce. And he'll make the play to win the inning. Some damage done, though. Kyle Schwarber, two run home run. And he gives the Phillies a 6 2 lead as we go to the bottom of the eighth. The eighth inning Brewers trail by four runs here. It's been a it's been a long game here, but pitcher take me back to Corbin Burns quick analysis. Uh, he was a bulldog out there today had to get through the the second and the fourth fourth innings before inherited runners scored. I think it looked like a lot like Freddie Peralta likes to do just grinding out at bats. I think the Phillies game plan was to wear him out and let make him throw a bunch of pitches and get him out of the game in five innings. That's what they did uh, for the most part. But you look at the offense for the Brewers. Guys that just got off the IL, 
doing some damage. Hunter Renfro going yard. Willie Adamas going yard. Need some more guys to go yard right here. All right, Brewers Live presented by Freighter and the Medical College of Wisconsin coming up after the ball game. We'll hear from Craig Council. And then afterwards, you can go to our Valley Sports Wisconsin social media pages for Brewers final pitch presented by West Bend. The silver lining will get you all set up for that big 10 day road trip coming up starting tomorrow at Washington. All right, good stuff, guys. Thanks for that. We'll look forward to. Brewers live post game Jerry's familia on the mound the former Met he'll get this eighth inning in a 6 2 game now Odubel Herrera comes in for defensive purposes takes over in right field for Castellanos yeah familiar has only appeared in one of the clubs last six games this month in his first appearance since Tuesday that was back on May 31st against the Giants Peterson bounces one to Stott who makes a play for out number one. Brewers had an early lead in this one. Adamas homered in the first. And then the Phillies scored a run in the second to tie it. Took the lead with a two run fifth. And then they've added on. Harper homered in the seventh. Two run homer from Schwarber in the top of this inning. Renfro homered his last time up. Represents the second Brewers run. And I had to feel good for Hunter Renfro. His first home run since returning Tuesday was his return from a hamstring injury. And getting much better at bats the last couple of days he was drifting a little bit jumping at the baseball which is natural after. Being off for two weeks. Not that easy to take that kind of time off and then jump into the batter's box in a major league game. Didn't take him long though. Renfro takes a strike. Renfro with 10 homers and 20 RBIs now. Billy's closer is Corey Knabel, the former Brewer closer, all star, who has been with the Dodgers last few years. Signed him to a free agent deal. Dave Dombrowski has put together a high velocity bullpen with some experience. There's Dave Dombrowski, heads up the baseball operations with the Phillies. Bullpen got off to a slow start this year, but much better lately. Renfro hits that one sharply into center field, and Moniak runs it down. Nice play by Moniak. Renfro hit it hard, but lines out, and two men are gone. Couple of good at bats for Hunter Renfro, but unfortunately Moniak gave him to make a nice running play. Got a good jump, angled perfectly, and made that one look easy. Very fast outfielder, Moniak. Two outs for Caratini. You're always interested in a, a former closer in a setup role or in a non closers role. That would be the case for Familia. Remember, he once led the majors in saves, was an all star with the Mets, had 51 saves one year. But he hasn't been in a closers role in the last three seasons. Caratini with a base hit. There you go. Two out single to right. Caratini's got a three hit game today. Yeah, looking good at the plate. Now catching well and getting a lot of playing time with Omar Narvaez on the COVID list. Be good to get Omar back, but Caratini's doing a fine job in his absence. We 
Brewers need base runners. They get one with two outs here in the eighth. Checking that card in the bullpen. Brewers would love to force Rob Thompson's hand here. And with a four run lead, he's sticking with his pattern. Here's Taylor now. Takes a strike. And again, a position to get Knable in the ball game. He almost blew his save. First game of the series. Walked the bases low. There's Corey. Taylor one out of three today he singled sharply in the second inning. Oh and to the count. Taylor getting the start in center field today. With yell it's due next. Two outs oh and two familia deals and a strikeout to end the inning. To the ninth we go. The Brewers down six to two in danger of being swept. Phillies coming to bat. Harper will lead off. Ready to lead off. Check out today's first Midwest Bank momentum changer. And the Phillies with eight home runs in this series. And they popped two here in the last couple of innings. Harper. And Kyle Schwarber hit four home runs yesterday. And the Phillies are red hot right now. Got a chance to win their seventh consecutive ball game, and they've used the long ball to do it in this three game series against the Brewers. Brewers took two out of three from the Phillies in Philadelphia earlier this year. In danger of being swept. Harper on the first pitch off the end of the bat. That is going to fall for a base hit. And Harper is aboard with a leadoff single. Able to salvage a day, he was 0 for 3. And hits in his last two at bats. Yeah, you got to play so deep with Bryce Harper at the plate that a ball like that's going to drop most of the time right off the end of the bat. Harper hustling around the bases. He was thinking about a double. First at bat for Herrera came in. Defensively for Castellanos. Herrera got a start yesterday. Trevor Kelly back out for a second inning. Surrendering the two run homer last inning to Schwarber. Cardinals lost earlier today. Rays beat them in a nice and tidy sub two hour game. Two to one the final score. Brewers know they will hit the road in first place. Would love to add to that lead. Trying to fight through a slump. A team slump right now. They got to get through it. There's no way around it. Just got to grind it out. Five straight losses and down six to two today. I, I honestly didn't believe the Brewers had a six, seven game losing streak in them just because of their great pitching staff. Yeah, right. Starting rotation. But you're right. You never know. The starters have not been at the top of their game either. But when you're not hitting, it puts a lot of pressure on your starting pitching. Yeah, you feel like you can't give up any runs, it might cost you a game. Margins are thin. It affects everything when you're not swinging the bats well. That's a big arm to get back. Brandon Woodruff has been out with an ankle sprain. Sophia reported yesterday he's close. Haters' consecutive scoreless inning streak ended on Tuesday. 
Excuse me swing from Herrera. He's able to stay alive. Yeah, Josh blowing his first save of the year. First save in a long, long time. Was it since last July? That's it. 40 consecutive scoreless innings. He still has 18 saves. That still is good enough to lead the league along with Taylor Rogers. Herrera sends that one deep to right. That one's not coming back. And the Phillies with their ninth home run of the series. It's another two run blast. And now it's eight to two. First at bat of the day Herrera with his fifth homer on a one two pitch a change up up in the zone and didn't miss it way back and right a six run lead for Philadelphia it's not just the nine homers the multi run homers two two run homers yesterday a three run blast by Harper. Schorber and Herrera with two run home runs here today. Those are the killers. Yeah. Another day game has gone final. The Diamondbacks beat the Reds. Five to four. So Rays over the Cardinals today. Diamondbacks over the Reds. Dodgers have opened up a 10 7 lead over the White Sox. See Tony LaRussa in that game. Walked Trey Turner in a 1 2 count. He intentionally walked him. Backhand pickup, Peterson. Nice play. Good strong throw for out number one. Intentionally walked him and then what? There's a one two count runner ended up at second base that left a base open at first. So he walked him in a one two count and then Max Muncy hit a three run homer. That didn't work out. No it didn't. It did not work out. That was a six run fifth inning for the Dodgers. Maybe overthinking a bit. <laughs> On a one two count. Every now and then I'll uh, I'll ask Tony La Russa if he remembers when he. Turned the tables on the. Uh, your lovable Brewers broadcasters one day. Yeah, right. He didn't do anything. Not a thing. <laughs> He's the master of deflecting. And it worked. <laughs> they had a whole team of reporters standing outside our booth. Yeah, that was uh, when Yadier Molina got really upset in an umpire, I think, bumped him. He got thrown out. Yeah. And instead of answering questions about that, turned it on us. That's not fair. Got away with it though. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, I forgot what the line was, but something about expecting more professionalism. <laughs> <laughs> Those are expectations are way too high. I know that. You can't expect that out of us. <laughs> well, it worked, especially with the St. Louis Riders. I remember that uh, Albert Pujols got hit, and then I think well, an inning or two later, yeah. then uh, Albert. Or uh, Ryan Braun got drilled yep. in the back. Molina went off. I think all we said was there's going to be a suspension here. Maybe a little more. It's all in good fun. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he walked Trey Turner on a one two count with two outs. And then Muncie hit a three run homer. Muncie just got back. He had been. Out. Remember, he injured his elbow against the Brewers in the last game of the regular season last year. He didn't play in the playoffs at all. Gregorius, a high fly ball to center. This will be the second out. Yeah, Muncy hurt his elbow, didn't require surgery, but got off to a dreadful start. Was still having some issues with his elbow, so they sent him back down to. First rest and then get some at bats and then he just got back. Had a five RBI day today. Dodgers and Mets are dangerous. Yeah. I mean, 
big payrolls. Great talent. The top three in the Dodgers batting order is as good as it gets. Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, and Trey Turner. Yeah. Now you add Muncie to the mix. It's a long season, though. Most of the time, it's the team that stays the healthiest is going to end up winning. You never know what can happen in a long year. Then you got that extra playoff spot in each league. That'll open some doors. It's going to be a fun race down the stretch in the central. Yeah, it doesn't feel like it right now, folks. I understand, but it, it is. It's going to be a good one. Brewers are going to be right there. Trust me. Pop up to end the inning. Two run Homer Herrera. Last call for the Brewers here. We go to the bottom of the ninth. It is eight to two, Phillies. Corbin Burns struck out the side in the first. Willie Adamas hit a home run in the bottom of the first. But it has turned all Phillies since. And they are three outs away from a clean sweep and back to back series sweeps for the Phillies. They swept the Angels. And now a chance to win three in a row here in Milwaukee. James Norwood will get the ball here in an 8 2 game. Brewers back at the top of their order. Yeah, through a perfect ninth inning with a couple of strikeouts to finish Friday night shutout of the Angels. That was his first appearance since the end of end of May. Yelich with a hit and a walk today. He's one out of three. In a rough homestand, the Brewers in danger of going one and six on this homestand. Padres, Phillies, starting a three city road trip. Well, maybe a chance to get hot on the road. You never know, it can happen. The Brewers are more accustomed to being on the road than being at home, that's for sure. That probably feels more familiar. Two and two on Yelich. Aaron Ashby gets the ball tomorrow. Talented young lefty. Exciting to watch every time he pitches. Well, he's really developed a good changeup last couple of starts. Really, really good changeup. So much movement on his fastball. Fastball and changeup move very similar. That's a matchup tomorrow. Betty against Ashby. 60 strikeouts and 46 innings for the young lefty. Earned his way into that starting rotation. Brewer starters give them a chance every day. That's for sure. Back up the middle. Diving is Gregorius. Can't corral it. And Yelich is aboard with his second hit. Yelich's going to end up with a nice homestand here. Got his back going a little bit. Two out of four today for Yelich. Gives him five hits and 12 at bats. Staying on the baseball much better. I mean, that pitch away and he goes right back through the middle with it. Hey, try and pull that ball. It's going to be an easy out. Ground ball to second. Stay on it to base hit. And here's Keston Hira. So a chance to get Hira an at bat. Adamas is done for the day. Did Homer for the first time since coming back. Wait, how many pitches did Willie Adamas see today? I think he had 16 foul balls. 
twice he had double digit at bats <laughs> pitch a scene. Yeah. Busy day. Thirty seven says Dominic Catronio stats man to the stars right off the top of his head. Thirty seven. Thirty seven pitches and four at bats. That's a lot of pitches. How do you remember that without looking. <laughs> Got to check out Dom's podcast, Locked On Brewers. It'll be spitting some numbers at you tomorrow, I'm sure. Every morning it's there. That's my listen when I go uh, for my morning workout. The workout? Get the workout in, listen to Dom, the podcast workout. Brewers have a good podcast going with our guy Tim Dillard, Brewers Unfiltered. He gave me a sticker for that. They got merch as Hira strikes out for the first out. When's the Bill Schroeder podcast coming, Rock? Uh, if these walls could talk the audio version. Yeah, I don't, I'm not doing that, but I am a guest on podcasts every now and again. I was right? on uh, Dom's podcast. What'd you get? You get one of those black and white TVs? Pat on the back. <laughs> a thank you. Gift certificate. That's all I need. Golf lessons. I think I'm uh, getting ready to take the game public. Oh, I would like to see that. Played golf with Dom in spring training. He and his dad, Vince Catronio. Yeah, we got a uh, we got a little crew game kind of in the works. I understand during the All Star break. That might be the time you break out your game. Are you joining us? Announcers versus crew, but Dom does not count as crew. Since he's actually on the air, he is on the announcer team. Crew's got no chance. You know the scene in Caddyshack when they go to the pool for 15 minutes? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what the scene is like when our crew ends up on the golf course. With the baby Ruth in the uh, pool. <laughs> <laughs> is that what you mean? Close it down, drain the pool. <laughs> Might have to televise that event. That's a swing from Telez. He's upset. Third base umpire says Trip Gibson. Yeah, you did. I saying, didn't want to. Raddy's saying game not over. I don't think I went. You've been here this long. We're approaching the four hour mark of this game, by the way. Not that we got anywhere else to be or would even want to be anywhere else. He's got to jump on a plane and go to Washington. Yeah, go to D.C. I mean, Washington's not going anywhere. It's going to be there when this game's <laughs> over. I hope. You never know. We've eaten everything in sight here in the boot, so we're good. Telez swings and misses. And a strikeout for the second out. Brewers down to their last out. Put this homestand and series in the rear view. Yep, flush it. Forget about it. Move on. It's been an ugly one. Luis Urias looking for his first hit of the day. 0 for 3 with a walk. Mm, nasty. Big. Slider from Norwood. Oh yeah, get that second wave of the the sugar. That'll carry you right through. On the ground through and a base hit for Urias. First hit of the day for Luis. Got in on his hands just a little bit, but able to fight it off in the left field. Never give up in that bad. Look like a fosh. Maybe a kind of a split touch pitch. And Luis able to fight it off in the left field. All right, that brings up Andrew McCutcheon, the former Philly.
Phillies are going right back home. They've got a series with the Diamondbacks coming up a homestand with the Diamondbacks and the Marlins. They're in a window now where they're playing. 12 games out of 15 in their home ballpark. And they're taking advantage of it. Schedule is favorable for the Phillies as well in the next few weeks. Well, it could be favorable now, but not so favorable late in the year. They got a tough road trip to finish their season. That's a base hit inside the bag at first down into the right field corner. McCutcheon with an RBI single. Yelich scores easily. And the Brewers have a third run in. McCutcheon with an RBI. You never know. One day leads to the next. You get a little confidence going. A couple of guys get some base hits. And good feelings going into Washington. You never know what the effect of something like this could be. That's a nice approach by McCutcheon, too. Just pulling the hands in and fighting it off down the first baseline. Never ever give up in that bat. Two men are on. Here is Jace Peterson. Now well, your goal right now for the Brewers is get Corey Knebel in the game, force the hand of the Phillies. In a long ball here, makes it a two-run game. They do just that. One ball one strike. Brewers down to their last out here. And Peterson a swing and a miss one and two the count splitter. Well you got a Rios at third McCutcheon at first. And that one missed. Keep punching. The beauty of this game, you yep. got to get all 27 out. Keep the line moving. Peterson looking for his first hit. Two and two, and a bouncing ball coming in. Gregorius and close play, safe at first. Peterson hustling down the line. Urias scores. Rob Thompson wants to take a look at this. I'll tell you, this could change things, and they're going to go ahead and challenge. Yeah, why not? I mean, you have nothing to lose. Ooh, yep. Yeah, he's, he's out. He's going to be out. This game's going to be over. All right. So they will uh, take a look. Las Diaz. Philadelphia is challenging the safe call at first base. Yeah, it looks like they got him. This should be a quick one. The perfect ending to this game in this homestand. Symbolic. Love that Peterson is busting it down the line here. And almost worked. Got the safe call here, but looks like it's going to be overturned. First base umpire Dan Bellino. After review, ball is overturned. The runner is out. The game's over. And that's it. So the Phillies with their second consecutive sweep. They get the Angels at home, and now the Brewers on the road. Phillies to 28 and 29. Brewers to 33 and 26. They'll try to get things turned around in D.C. manana. <laughs> Brewers live coming your way next. Craig Kishon and Tim Dillard. So long, everybody.